Ah! Whoa! I gotta Woo! fix that really Yay. quick. I do apologize for the inconvenience. I did write B team on the thing, so I'm gonna need to fix that. Whoops. I'm just gonna switch that to A team. Done. Ding. All right, so that should update momentarily for you guys at home. But hello, uh, we are playing ourselves once again some wonderful Dungeons and Dragons playing with the A team that we've got here. Going down our list of our intrepid adventurers, our heroes, uh, we have on the top of the list Siasee's Blue Leaf, our Banshee Bard, being played by Cassie Chu. It's me. Hello, hi everybody. Long time no see. Just kidding. I was on a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were and here it was Tuesday. Fun. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, we, and I'm here again. It was great. My party oh, was very man. good. It was so awesome. <laughs> oh my fun. god. And yeah, yeah, Cassie actually doesn't live super far from where I am right now, so it's super easy for us to hang out. Yeah. Uh, and that, yeah, and it was really funny because it was like, I guess I'll see you Thursday. <laughs> like when we go to play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, we've got Spooty Poots coming in playing our. You on T, there we go. There's the word. Uh, our our you on T paladin person and Vrail. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. I have I have returned. About yeah. To, about, about to kick Fire Elemental's ass. Fuck yeah. Uh, of course we've got also Casey the Killing Chick, our uh our stream kohai number one, uh coming and playing Floop, our grung frog person druid. Hello. Sophos Moss. Wow. There it is. What? There it is. There it is. <laughs> hi, hi. Hello. And of course, last, um, well, no, because we've, we've got two more people here. Because uh, my brain just was like, that's a green icon. That means it's the last person, just like the B team. Uh, <laughs> of course, we've got uh, Shaskar coming in, who was with us yesterday when we were playing some Sea of Thieves, playing now. Nope, sorry. Yes, playing Zaxtriar, our goblin artificer. Almost, uh, almost left me out there, didn't you? Well, now I got you. It ain't easy to be green. And still, also not the last person. Nope, <laughs> absolutely not. Now, last but certainly not least, of course, uh, we've got Warden coming and playing our Thrycreen monk keeper. There you go. Greetings. It is good to be back. Hell yeah, good to have you guys back. Ah. Oh. Well, last, ladies and gentlemen, when our intrepid adventurers had made their way out, uh, they had left the gates of Autometh uh, and had traveled south, trying to find a way across the western coast towards the Living Mountains. Uh, having come across a singular dwarven engineer uh, who had been exiled from his kingdom, they decided to bring him back to his people uh, to fight for his case in court, and to get them to agree to build his uh, magic steamship that he had uh, uh, designs for. You guys had managed to get them to agree to allow you to not only build and design this ship within their kingdom, but they've been thus far uh, relatively accommodating for dwarves and uh, have now given you the opportunity to fight the fire elemental whose core will power the steamship. Also, thank you for your subscription, uh, Neri Tazuma. Uh, 21 months, getting close to that two-year mark, and thank you as well for Kara uh, for... God, what is that? In, in a row, 38 months. Good God, thank you so much. Yeah! Subscription hype! Sub hype! Woo! Woo! Yeah. And so... With that, we find ourselves... Let me just uh, move us on down this way here. Oh, yeah, it's all the way at the bottom. I have so many screens. <laughs> um, we find ourselves within the Dwarven Kingdom. Uh, having just spent a few weeks like gathering resources and supporting the engineering team how they could and uh, supporting other parts of the kingdom where possible... Uh, in getting this all constructed, they are now uh, met with, you know, the size of the ship as it is, and they're going to need 
uh, a large elemental core to power the ship as per its design. So it, as it is going to be largely made from metal, it's going to be too big to be run off of like sails or rowing power. Uh, so they needed to put in like large uh, rotary panels on the sides, like uh, paddles that'll run to propel the ship forward through the sea. Uh, but they need that core. Um, but yeah, you guys were notified that as soon as you were ready, they would uh, begin the ritual down at the trial by combat arena uh, that the kingdom has. And um, yeah, so what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys getting up to? Um. Since since the decision has had dropped down, mm -hmm. uh, flu. Uh, whenever she, it, it's a few days or a few hours, I don't know, but she will become extremely antisocial. She will be sad, uh, hiding in her bucket with only her snoot poking out. She will only come out to eat and then go back. Oh, so sad. Such a sad baby. Sad friend. <laughs> So we That's received the news that we're going to have to do that ahead of time? Yes, uh, yes. that as yes. they were sort of finishing the design and the construction of a lot of the parts um, that were like the designs were then be sent away to a separate team of uh, smiths to machine and fabricate a lot of the parts of it. Um, they then turned to us and they basically go, OK, so while that's all being done, uh, we need the core now to be able to measure out like how big it's going to be and how large the ship will be able to be to accommodate it. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. How Pleasure long do we have? As uh, long as you like, really, Sorry. at this point. Oh, I um, had a question. Yeah. Uh, Doc, at some point you were mentioning that we were supposed to be leveling up. Are we doing that? Is that a after this episode? That is going to be a post thing should you survive this next trial. Nice. Cool beans. <laughs> and I don't have to worry or think about it until then, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. Like if we were going to be leveled for this game, we would have done it between games. Yeah. Yeah. I would have. Yeah. I would have absolutely let you guys know, like that you're going to be leveling up i wouldn't like spring that on you at the beginning of the game yeah um, no and i've been giving a lot of thought to that and yeah. i basically was like you know the b team just just reached a big milestone and if you guys make this milestone then grats everybody goes up to level eight Yay. <clears throat> All right. um, um, yeah yeah go ahead when keeper, he when keeper hears that news he'll finish up finishing any finishing touches left on his bruise and then we'll spend the rest of the time training <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you're free to like talk to people it's usually um like as, as you guys are usually escorted to and from your quarters uh within the kingdom now uh actually um floop as you retreat into your bucket um for the majority of the time that you guys are now spending uh post this news um you see garrick uh the a uh, dwarven engineer that you guys have been working with like eventually finds his way sort of like plops himself down next to the bucket uh and like gives it a, a poke on the side um it stays silent for a few seconds then she slowly pokes her head out of the bucket not even out enough for her lily pad to enter like to place itself on her uh, on her head, just just enough to see who the fuck is poking her. <laughs> you see the grizzled visage of <laughs> Garrick staring back at you um, with a like. If if you want to try to discern what that look is that's on his face, you can do an insight. But you know he's an old dwarf; it's not super easy to tell. Uh, okay, hold on. Do I even have insight? <laughs> Let me grab my cheek. <laughs> Everyone has insights, just how good you are with it. Yeah. Uh, insight, insight, insight. Where is it? Uh. A boom. Yeah. yeah, he's he's got like a flat brow um, that's furrowed down, and he's like got a very intense look on his face um, as he's looking down at you. Oh, she slowly pokes out her her head enough for her ear to be unclogged and she slowly waves he like gives a stern nod and he goes i see you're spending most of your time 
in your book it now. Yeah, yeah. Are you worried? I'm sad. What's you sad for, little moist one? Well, I'm a druid and I grew up with with the idea of loving and taking care of everything that is nature. Hmm. And now you like the project requires me to either destroy or enslave something like that. It's against my it's against what everything I stand for. Hmm. And he like nods slowly. Um and he then like sort of uh like puts an arm around the side of the bucket and with his other hand uh gestures to the pipes that you see. Uh, running through the roof and some of them some of them like coming in the wall and then doing a 90 degree turn out another wall and he says you see this metal here do you think that it's been enslaved by our people no no of course not nature's got a funny way of tasking those strong enough to see if we can make do with the things given the metals that existed in the stone these here that we forged into these pipes, the heat used to pump the water and the steam through them to warm and cool our homes as needed. All of this was challenges laid before us by nature. The stone asked of us if we were strong enough to take metal from the stone. The flame asked of us if we were patient enough to allow it to smelt our steel. All these things. She just rolls her 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 shoulders. I I know what you mean, but contrary to that, uh, an elemental is sentient. Aye, and he, with his free hand, like pats the floor and he says, "Does this stone not breathe?" She kind of moves her head, unless you killed soul in stone elementals for that. Simply because something does not breathe like us, or speak like us, or move like us, does not mean that it does not live. This whole mountain has a spirit. A spirit of our ancestors that we hone every day. And it is simply up to us as to whether or not we're strong enough to go forward. Any elementals that we call with our rituals are only those that have answered. She slowly nods her head. I, c I guess you can see it that way. Aye. And I think if anyone in your party is equipped enough to deal with a large fire elemental, it might be you. And he pokes the side of the bucket and the water sloshes around a bit. <laughs> she, 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 sneaker, she sneakers a bit. I know I'm good with elementals. I can summon my own. I, really? Yeah, I can. They're not big, they're not super powerful, but I can still call them for help. His mouth makes like a capital C pointing down and he like nods impressed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that I, I doubt my capacities. I doubt the ethics of it. Aye. Well, I'd say that's duly noted. But I assure you that we don't make practice at enslaving things here. Any elemental that answers our call is only one that has chosen to do so. I... I guess so. Aye. You cannot I mean, force them into this realm any more than you could force a tree to grow down. She 
She wobbles her head, like, in a way, like, she, she tries to honestly imagine a, a tree growing down. <laughs> I guess you make sense. Hi. And he kind of hoists himself up to his feet with a number of dad noises. Uh, <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then... Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like kind of bends down and like taps the side of the bucket a little bit uh gently sloshing the water and he goes right then no more sad faces up and at him and then he okay. like kind of hikes up his pants a bit and you know elbows out walks out of the room <laughs> she, she's gonna still take her time before going out of the room all right uh, what's everybody else getting up to? Rail would uh, like Keeper to go to a blacksmith. Is training. Rail's going to a blacksmith. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, blacksmith, you are in a blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, the whole place is. Um, but yeah, she wants to browse. See All right. what this uh, craftsmanship can do with her uh, do for her combat. Yeah. I think Sizes um, probably went with just to kind of like take a walk around guys. and like keep a friend company. Yeah. Here we'll go yeah. like so. Uh, blue, blue and yellow diamond. Yeah, blue and yellow. <laughs> blue, blue and yellow. Going shopping. Yeah. Um, blue and yellow diamond went shopping. Keep it right. basically, yeah, just be training, meditating, exercising, practicing martial arts. Um, stuff. do you do that in your quarters, or do you find a place to do that? Uh, meditate probably in the quarters, or would probably find a, a place that seems more, uh, serene. So, so a place where he can be more close to the stone, I guess, because you said that I uh, keeper felt like the uh, closeness or similarity almost between the stones mm -hmm. of, of his like the caverns at home and the beads around his neck and the stones mm -hmm. here. So if yeah. there's a place where he could go and meditate near that kind of energy, he'd do it there. Otherwise, he'd just do it in his uh, in his quarters. Yeah, no, there is um, a number of the the more roughly hewn passages um, that still have these like perfectly cut stairs uh, that go through them, but like the walls and the ceilings of them are a little more uh, roughly done that go deeper into certain areas. Certainly some of the mining spaces that they have there um, that like where a vein of ore ended, there's just, you know, it, the cave just kind of ends at a dead end there that you can find uh, to meditate in. And we will and come back muted. around to that. Uh... He was talking, but he was muted. Oh yeah. Oh, he's so, talking. Yeah. Was muted? Oh, that's okay. So, yeah, I find a place like that kind of out of the way, meditate there, and go back to his quarters to train. Dope. All right. Um, then yeah, we will. We'll we'll come back around to that. Uh, and now we've got a Sciases and Vrail are heading into a shop. Mm -hmm. So you guys. Um, as you're, as you're walking around, eventually find your way to like the Craftsman District, where there's a number of shops and a number of other things. Uh, you do find your way eventually to a smithy, um, where as you come in, you see there is a number of like large billows and uh, and other things sort of happening in this space. Where is it? How big are the doors in this place? How big are the doors? You see, the doors are. Um, the doors are very, they're, they're like human sized doors that are just a touch shorter. Oh. Um, so when you're in your pure blood form, you're Which more human, uh, as Oh, form. no, I'm not, not human ever. Oh yeah, yeah no, then you <laughs> definitely have to struggle to muscle your way in through the doors. And then even then, like you have to crouch a bit in order to oh, stand cool. in the rooms themselves. Yeah, I do that proudly Dope. without... <laughs> Without any pain to my ego. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like uh, Vrail walks into every room that she's like, uh, as if she's supposed to be there. Oh yeah, like definitely that's... with that energy. Like she yeah. owns the place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not at all awkward when you have to like sort of turn sideways and lay down to like get in through she a door. She leans forward. She puts her hands on the floor to like get through the doors. Yeah. It is almost like getting inside of one of those, like, children's plastic playhouses that, like, the kids fit into, but, like, you're a grown human, and so, like... 
Well, I feel you like you really have to like twist in order to get inside. <laughs> when when Vrail is at a full sprint and she doesn't have like her like weapons drawn or whatever, she uses her hands too to help like slither faster. She goes yeah. right down and goes. Right? You know, you'd have to to get through these doors for sure. Yeah. Uh, so like you are not... only just longer than you are tall than you are wide. So like even 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 if you're like lying down and using your arms to get in, like you still kind of have to like turn yourself sideways uh, and sort of like go in on one of your shoulders in order to to get in properly. Um... Well, I figure I figure mechanically speaking, she's she's just uh, taller than she is wide, but. Like, yeah, the yeah. the 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 way that it is is large sized creatures can still move through medium sized uh, hallways and enclosures. It just it just counts as difficult terrain. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So Mechanics. getting through, yeah, is is definitely something you can do. It's just a little a little a little uh, challenging, but you do manage to get in. Um, and uh, Siasis just <laughs> walks in after you, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, How'd you yeah, get the, in? I walked in. <laughs> I walked in. Uh, <laughs> you, and it's like watching, watching Vrail have to like get down on like a shoulder and like, like in through one of the doors and then like put hands on wall to like push the rest of the way in. Uh, and then you have to just, just decline your head just ever so slightly <laughs> in order to get in through the same door. Uh, it's like a fun juxtaposition. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you, you get in, um, and, uh, there is a stout dwarven woman, um, just, like, face and hands covered with ash and grease, uh, standing by one of the forges, uh, wearing, like, a large apron. Um, she has her hair done up in sort of, like, a braided mohawk, uh, of, like, a dirty blonde color with, like, a number of large iron rings bla braided into yes. her hair. Yes! Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm basically just describing what I wish was my wife. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Same. Uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, she, she's, she's standing there just like pounding away on a, a, a flat, blunt looking blade uh, and sort of turns over to you as you come in uh, and just stands silently with, like, her smithing hammer sort of hoisted over her right shoulder, just watching <laughs> as you oh, come in. Um, <laughs> just silently waits for you to finish getting in. She goes, Hi. How can I help you? I am looking for a weapon. And I unsheath my scimitar. In similar size to this. She, yeah, takes, like, a sniff and, like, looks at it. She holds your hands out and then gives you a look, like, may I hold this? For a moment, Vrail doesn't, but then she does. And she nice. hands okay. over the sword, <laughs> like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> she, with a, with a grace you wouldn't expect, um, walks over to one of, like, the large, clean tables that's there uh, and gently places it down upon a cloth. Uh, and, like, leans over and gives it a look. You see as she, like, sort of uh, runs her head back and forth across it, she leans in and gives it, like, a gentle smell. Um, she places a hand on it, just gently, doesn't run her hands across it, just gently puts all five of her fingers on one spot. Let's go. Gently puts all five of her fingers on a different spot. Let's go. Uh, and kind of like turns the blade over and then just like flicks the, the tip of the blade a little bit with her finger and goes, Hi, so this is, uh, this is an enchanted blade. It changes size. Mm. That's the depth of the enchantment, I believe. All right. But... So you'd like another, another blade that changes size with you, eh? Either that or something in a better metal. Better metal? This is just steel. Hmm. She, like, kind of makes her way around to the other side of the counter and goes, So change of size how, before we discuss metal, uh, like bigger, do you get bigger than this? No. I get about the size of a human. Ah, okay. So that's 
reasonable then <laughs> it's just like because it's like if i have I to make could. a sword that goes from this to bigger i uh, <laughs> like it's, it's just a different job that's a different that's a different job we're talking about um, it is within my ability to uh get bigger than this but i oh, don't really need, yes hmm. but i don't need to all right she kind of like uh, rubs one of her hands uh, across her like very very square jaw um, as she thinks and turns to you and says, so "Do you have a particular metal in kind, or?" Uh, I was looking to looking browse to see what you have. Well, uh, she turns to like uh, one of the large shelves behind her um, and starts grabbing like ingots of uh, different metal that she's got stored there uh, and like clanks one of them onto the table. Uh, she goes, right, so this uh, we've got here is Mithril, also known as Mage's Bane. That, and she tap taps it, uh, very hard to enchant as it is resistant to magic. As the name suggests. Aye. Uh, and then she places another uh, large ingot on the table. The the mithril ingot, if anybody that knows what mithril looks like, is very, like, almost pearlescent, like a white metal. Um, it almost glows in the light as it sits there. Uh, the other metal has, like, a very, like, darker steel look to it. Uh, and she places that on the table, tap taps it, and she says, that's adamantite. Hmm. That doesn't break. That's easier to enchant. As I said, I don't need to... I'm not looking for a, a weapon that changes size with me. <clears throat> I'm just looking for one this size in a, def in a different metal. Hmm. Oh, so you don't need the new one to change size as well. You're just looking for a big sword made out of a better metal than what you've got. I assume I didn't bring enough coin to enchant a an adamantite blade. Well, to enchant, well, she kind of like gives you a quick once over. And it was like, I don't know how much money you have, uh, but <laughs> I can tell you how much it cost. Uh, I... Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> tell, me, tell me how much it costs, and I'll tell you whether or not I brought enough pocket change. Well, something like that. An enchantment that would allow an atom to change size. See, now, and she, like, she, like, leans in and sort of, like, taps the side of her head with one of her uh, grimy fingers. It's just like, see, now, it's not that the blade gets bigger. It's actually that the original blade gets smaller. So it's just a shrinking enchantment. Uh, that simply returns to normal size once you're in full size. That's actually a relatively common enchantment, about 100 gold. And how much to create the blade? Well, depends on which. Uh, mithril, uh, she taps the first bar, that's hard to do. That will run you closer to 500 base. And adamantite? Closer to about 250. Vrail looks surprised. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like what? that for mechanical reasons, um, enchanting something that is made of mithril, like a magic item yeah, that's yeah. made from mithril goes up one stage in its rarity. Mm -hmm. And adamantium goes up like half a stage. Gotcha. Um... This is also the Dwarven Kingdom, so these metals probably also aren't that rare. They probably just have their own lying around everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, they still charge the money for the craftsmanship, but yeah, yeah it's not like yeah. they're, But like... Frail doesn't know that. They're like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, giving, I'm giving some roleplay to this. I don't know everything yeah. about dwarves. Uh... <laughs> uh, let me see. Where the fuck is my inventory? Oh, wait. I'm trying to navigate my character sheet. <laughs> it's been a bit. Yeah. Um, well, uh, in that case. So you said that 
it's harder to enchant, but not impossible to enchant. Aye, so it just you... takes some work. And which would be better? Uh, which would be a better blade, unenchanted? Unenchanted. Unenchanted. Uh, you'd want to go with this, and she points at the the mithril. It's more expensive, aye, and it's certainly uh, not unbreakable like the adamantine, but. It is a mage's bane, which means any magical barriers, any magical shields that a mage could put together, this will cut through it. It won't break the spell, but it will cut through. Downside, though, is you won't be able to enchant it with common spells, so any spells that, say, might light your sword on fire or something like that won't work. So if you're looking to kill a lot of wizards, then, you know, she taps the bar again. <laughs> Like, Vrail seems to be considering this. <laughs> um, As you sit and think, uh, she turns over to Saisis and goes, And how are you today, sweetheart? How can I help you? <laughs> oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing wonderfully, I, I, I think. I'm just here um, keeping my friend company as she looks for equipment. I, I don't know that I need anything in particular. I'm, I'm trying to think. And Sisi hmm. just kind of, like, ponders for a moment. She's not exactly sure. Like, you know, as someone who's, like, vaguely a caster, she's just like, I don't know. I do magic things, I guess, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, uh... But yeah, no, she she sort of uh, fixes her attention on you uh, and goes, so you with, um, you with her? She points at Vrail. Yeah, Sisi just nods. Do you travel in together? Yes, uh, with the rest of our compatriots who are oh, nice. kind of just about the area, doing their own preparations. All right, and what, uh, if I may ask, what preparations are you doing? Uh, well, I, I suppose my contributions are more magical in nature, so I'm not uh, really sure. Um, I'm just going to uh, do my best, I suppose. Um, I'm Wait. not exactly sure what kinds of things I could make use of. And she's just kind of nodding along uh, as you talk and goes, Right, of course. Uh, do you eat? I, I can if I would like to, yes. Would you like to, later, get something to eat with me? Uh, I don't see why not. That sounds lovely. Perfect. Right. So, 8 o'clock. I'll come find you. The guards will tell me. Uh, she turns, turns back to Frail. <laughs> ooh, uh, ooh say is he striking dates? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. You... I, I did not get your name. Uh, I'm Saezis. Uh, what's your name? Vala, sorry. And she, like, slaps her hand on the table uh, oh. a little bit, sort of in, like, uh, fuck, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Vril is... seems to be trying real hard not to be <laughs> insulted for being interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <It's> like, <clears throat> so uh, he's kind of, like, very gently, like, hats Vril, Vril's arm, like, I'm so sorry, I didn't... You're... Go right ahead. <laughs> Like, you know, where is it? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I keep it Wisdom together. Save. <laughs> I keep it together. <laughs> keep it together. Stick full. Stick full. Everything's fine. <laughs> Deep, long inhale through the nose. <laughs> Royalty. <laughs> yeah. Royalty. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, she, Vrail waits to make sure that everyone is paying attention to her again instead of... <laughs> yeah. yeah, she immediately turns her attention back to you to see if you've uh, made up your mind. Right. Um, do you have use for trade? Aye. Depends on the trade. This scimitar plus money 
for mm. a mithril enchanted Great blade. sword. Of your uh, size. Scimitar. Um, and if you could uh, detail mm. it in a specific way. Ah, we always take suggestions. Uh, but you want a mithril one-handed sword for your size. Yes. Scimitar. All right. All right. This curved blade, like... So you want me to remake this blade here, but in mithril for you? Yes, and... Just without uh, the enchantment. At, with the enchantment. Oh, with the enchantment. Yes, okay. with the enchantment, and I would like it detailed. As you said, you um, it is 500 gold for a mithril enchanted scimitar, right? Aye. Boo, 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 boo. And she kind of like picks up the 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 scimitar again gently and like turns it over in her hands a little bit and says well considering who you are and the nature of this sword and the nature of your business I'd say hi she I slowly nods and gives you like a stern look like I could do you 300 for the job Done. I'll take two off for the sword. Done. Uh, I uh, I would like the detailing to be uh, rings on the back of the blade to add sound. Uh, and uh, angry looking snakes down the side of the blades. Or down the sides of the blade. <laughs> she kind of like looks up with a smile and goes, "Oh, so you then, eh?" Ah, <laughs> like you know, gives like a little chuckle and like pats their thigh and is like, "Yeah." <laughs> That's the plan. Ah, perfect. Right, I could do that. Oh, uh, when do you need it? Is there a time frame? I'd prefer before our. Uh duty but um of course when like i know how long it takes to get perfection um so how long do you need i'd say and she kind of looks around the shop because normally it take me about a week to do this and at a game how long until we're doing the thing I mean, whenever you want. Oh, okay. uh, the the they they basically said that this would be the next stage, is they'd need to get the core, and that's up to you um, when you want to get this done. The only stipulation that they have is obviously you can't take forever, um, but you yeah. do have time to make preparations, and uh, Garrick will not be allowed to join you in the ring for this. Okay. That he is he's basically held under custody until this whole thing is finished. Um. Might I ask? Uh, I can absolutely give you the week uh, to make sure that it's good. Um, I would like to can like I would like to keep this scimitar until uh, the order is fulfilled. Ah, no, of course. Uh, and she like puts it back on the table in front of you and taps the side of her head and goes like, "No, I've already got it." Uh, so, should be good. Alright. Deal. Alright. I will be back in a week. I'm just gonna write... I look down to Sciases. And I marked, uh, like, I take out, uh, a pouch, I count it out, I count out the gold, and put it on the table. Alright. And, and, and I marked off 300. The... The 300, okay, yep. Um, then, yeah, she, like, politely, patiently waits as you count. Um, and the moment you're done, she, like, nods and, like, pounds a fist onto the table uh, and goes, Right! Uh, and then <laughs> sort of starts getting blocks of mithril off of the shelf and starts carrying them over uh, to... Uh, where the, the forge is and starts like stacking them into a workspace that's near over there. Um, starts like counting out like coal and things like that. Um, uh, and 
Uh, and uh, as as you're as you're there, just before you leave, she does turn to you though uh, and says, "And not to worry though, I've marked off uh, in the week's time. I've already calculated in uh, my time with your friends, so it's fine. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Take an extra uh, from the business; it should be fine." What? Oh. What? I. <laughs> She's saying that, like, going on a date with your friend's not going to make the sword take longer. Gotcha. Uh, I, I I looked confused as as to, like, the uh, intention, but I just nod. She's like, like, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, she points, like, a soot-covered finger over to Sizes and goes, I'll see you at eight. All right, and turns around and starts like throwing coal into a huge forge in the corner and like cranking a, a massive wheel that like builds pressure in the into uh, what what appears to be sort of like a, a like spring loaded uh, billows system that if they like crank it beforehand, then it'll like power the billows for them automatically hmm. uh, without it having to like without her having to get in and like do it or have another person do that. You gave me a time frame. I expect it to be done in that time frame. I don't care what else you do during that. All right. She gives you a thumbs up, uh, takes out a large pair of goggles and, like, straps them onto her head and starts uh, starts getting to work. Okay. Right. I look down to Sassy's. I nod and then I turn to leave. And I squeeze back out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turns, looks at the door. <sighs> <laughs> no, Vril, Vril's that... used to it because her her temple was under a bunch of lizard folk. Um, if she had to leave, she had to leave through lizard folk doors. Yeah. Yep. Like. <laughs> she oh. is not accommodating for large size creatures. No. Doesn't have to be. I'm gonna be there anyway. Yeah, typically, <laughs> but yeah, she's, and it's like, you could shrink down and get through that door with less trouble, but that would require you to shrink down, which yeah, is no. not something you are keen on doing. No. No. Pride. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Too proud so, to care. In, in the meantime, mm -hmm. uh, what Zax is doing, uh, one more one morning when he's he's like uh setting to his gear and doing like routine maintenance and stuff he shakes out his elven cloak which shimmers with uh with color as it usually does uh however after he shakes it out uh the color seems to fade and it looks more much more mundane mm -hmm. than uh than previously uh you could anybody who looks at it can still see the work that he's done is still there it just seems to be not active anymore Oh, yeah. So it's sort of inert uh, lying there. Yeah, and he, he sort of tucks it away with his, his the rest of his gear uh, and picks up his uh, his rod with the, the like the, the runic etchings in it, uh, and he heads out and turns to, to anybody else who's around and says, I'm going to go do some research on this fire elemental that we're, we're going to be going up against, get some, uh, get some good intel. Yeah, you... Uh... Are you talking to the engineers or just like whoever's around when you say it? I, I'm talking to like the the group, uh, just to, so that they'll know, like, have a rough idea of where I'm going to be. Um, if he says it while Keeper is training in the in the, the in our dorm room, then Keeper will go. Yeah, I'll just assume that like whoever's hanging out there is hanging out there, like Braille. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, all, right, all right. If you want to, then yeah. I probably in the the mages' quarter, if any anywhere. Uh, but uh, I'll ask someone when we go out. Uh, I assume that we're that there is uh, like a guard or something posted uh, close to, close ish to our room. Yeah, there's uh, there's guards constantly posted outside of your dwelling, just uh, in case you guys have need of something or in case something bad happens. Um, when you come out and you ask, like you know. Who could I talk to archives. about about uh, these about these creatures? Like, where do you where are your archives? And they 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 tell you that like the Arcanist's quarter is like 
definitely where you'd want to go or the Arcanist Academy um, to head back to that place. And uh, some of the, the guards offer to escort you down to that area. I'll say, if, if you want to come, you can go ahead. I, I think I've been there a few times already. I think I should be able to, to figure out my way. And Zach starts trumping it down uh, down the path with his, like, proudly with his little uh, uh, apprentice medal that he got. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, you got the you got the little apprentice's medal uh, that they wearing, gave you. Wearing his his uh, component pouch proudly as well. And keeper will accompany Zach closely. <laughs> All right. Because why not? A little little outing. Yeah, why not? I think that'll be fun. Um... All right. So then, yeah, you guys are going to head on down to the Arcanist's quarter. Um, as you guys head back down to the Arcanist Academy, uh, they effectively, upon seeing you guys all approach, they usher you into um, one of the other rooms where uh, Steel Cap actually was. Uh, so as they, as they march you in, you again see Steel Cap there. Uh, <laughs> waiting, sort of looking at the the large red gem, and as you guys uh, start coming in, he smiles and and sort of nods knowingly and gestures for you guys to come over. While while we're on our walk towards him, uh, Zax will kind of nudge Keeper and point at the gem and said, that, "That's the kind of thing that we're going to be making." Ah, it is. Core. Yes. And steel cap like nods and gestures to it and goes, Aye, this is a core. Same as many that uh, dot around the inside of our kingdom. So you'll be fighting for one of these as soon as you're ready. Yeah, yeah. Keeper just, of. Uh, Keeper's just looking around like fascinated, but otherwise doesn't really feel like, like it, it's all really new and foreign to him, so he kind of stays quiet. So speaking of. We're here to do uh, a little bit of research on the, the elementals that we're going to be fighting. Maybe get some uh, insight in uh, good combat against them. Hmm. Knowing your enemy. Smart move. Keeper nods uh, solemnly when he says that. And he then kind of like looks around your group and goes, All right. What would you like to know? Most is just doing general information about him. Well, how can they be hurt? hurt? Other than, like, the regular, <laughs> it's fire. <laughs> Aye. Well, so... That's about your understanding, though. That's, like, the that's the breadth of it. It's a creature made well, of fire, right? No, no, more, more than just that. Like, it's a creature made of fire, yes. But, like, right. because I haven't experienced them... Personally, like I, I would assume they're sentient and they, they, they have reasoning. So, do they well, fight? That's a complicated question, but yes, uh, or rather, the answer is a bit complicated. So it goes a bit like this: Elementals are sentient in the strictest sense. They do have thoughts. They can speak. Some of whom can even speak our tongue a bit. We've got a close relationship with the uh, elementals of both the Earth and Fire domains. But much of it also depends on which you summon and why. They are sentient, yes, they do speak, aye. But, <sighs> he kind of like rubs his beard a little bit. It's hard to explain that they are a concept given life. They're not as complex as us. They don't have as high a brain function as we do. Fire elementals, their passion, their hatred and love given form. So they're less than a living creature per se and more of like an instinct. In a sense, I. The elements embody different emotions, different feelings and a lot of how the uh, Ingans communicate with each other is often through expression, just having feelings is the way that they can communicate. Often that's their native tongue. Well, 
Well, it it's a bit relieving that we're not, you know. Morden's muted. Going... Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could hear him talking in the background there. Are they fed by these feelings? Oh, no. Uh, he shakes his head. Not necessarily. A fire elemental is going to be endless hatred, passion, just bottomless fury. You'll never tire them out. And that's often why they end up becoming engines like this. And he points at the crystal. Uh, that energy just goes and goes longer than we've been able to calculate. If it does have an end, we haven't seen it. Where they draw that power from, we don't know. Likely from their own plane. But very much how the sun shines upon our world, so too does their passion and their hatred shine out from them. Well, it's a bit relieving to know that, you know, they're, they're not, like, entrapping or something that's like... I don't know, it's hard to describe it. it it's just not truly sentient, just sort of base emotion type thing. No, precisely. Uh, these things... They are sentient. They do have thoughts, but not in the uh, not in the same way that you and I do. We wouldn't agree to that kind of slavery were that the case. When we do this ritual, the only elementals that answer the call will be the ones that choose to do so. And as they've learned to speak our tongue, they know what they're getting into when they answer the call. So if they know they will be fighting. They know they must lose. Well, they know that losing's an option. Not always that that happens. On occasion, uh, we've brought them here, and they've managed to devour those that stand before them and then return to their realm. Oh, I, I think I understand a little bit. So it's it's like they're right. testing us to, to see if we're worthy of actually harnessing that power. All right. Same as you've been talking to Garrick. Uh, say, <laughs> like, point, uh, it says, like, right, no, that's that's exactly it. That is uh, precisely the notion that, like, you could no more enslave these creatures more than you could enslave the iron from the earth or the stones that make our floors and our walls. Well, I wouldn't be enslaving inanimate objects i mean like if it was like a golem moving around and like it was talking to me and saying hey i don't want this to happen please stop this then obviously i'm not gonna do that well that's an interesting question he sort of like leans down to you uh dry, dragging on his pipe a little bit and goes what is the difference between the stone that moves and one that doesn't well it's a matter of like if the stone is requesting that i don't do this then obviously I'm not going to do that. But because this one is more like it's it's testing me to see if I'm worthy of doing this. It's it's we're entering into an agreement. Mhm. Mm well the stones and many things in the universe have different ways of talking than we are used to or accustomed to, you see. Or my, uh, uh, Zex, Zex turns, turns to, uh, to, um, Keeper, uh, and kind of nudges him and says, Reminds me of that big guy that we, uh, that stepped on that rock during that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about him before! <laughs> 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 the giant, he just points at his foot with the giant spike stuck in his foot. Ooh. <laughs> well, I, I remember that I was, I was the only one that spoke its language. <laughs> yeah. The ogre? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ogre. yeah you remember him? Giant ogre that lives in your fucking. <laughs> yeah, the giant ogre that was super happy to solve the word problem and eat the sheet away. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> That's just living there rent free in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he points at his foot. Uh, yeah, it is, Wait, I spoke know, just giant. Because, just, but, <laughs> just, just because something doesn't speak our language doesn't mean it has to have thoughts or feelings or opinions on things. 
Right. Which I agree. And there's more ways of communicating than talking with a mouth. I mean, it's more than a few folks I find over in the nobles' cast talk out of their arse. And he chuckles a bit. <laughs> oh. So, so I heard with the, that merchant guild guy. <laughs> he like <laughs> rolls his eyes, and you actually see like a bit of black smoke like trindle out of his nose as he does so. Uh, and he goes, Gothic. Bah. Yep, my sentiments exactly. Bankers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you grumble something, grinding his teeth, and you see, like, again, a bit of, like, soot and ash comes out of his mouth as he does it in a frustrated fashion. Uh, then he goes back to, you know, dragging on his pipe. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, the fire, though, that makes up these. And he points to the gem is not unlike that of our own universe. But, so if you if you douse it in water and whatnot, it will disrupt its form. But every one of these that you'll find, those sentient elements they may be, will always have a core, a crystallized form of their energy at their center. He taps himself in the center of his chest. Zach, Zach sort of looks over at... Uh the arm that's sort of resting across his shoulder is like, hey, it's just like you. Pokes it. It gives you like a little thumbs up. <laughs> is this core their vulnerable point? He, he like, in a sense, aye. If you're looking for something solid to strike when you're fighting them, this is as good as anything, but really disrupting their form with any object could work, though they are if you're just hitting them with, you know, sticks and stones, they are resistant as most of that will just pass through them um, as it does disrupt them a bit, but not enough to uh, cause any lasting harm, like it's, you know it does affect them, but to a lesser degree, but if you found yourself using, say, ice or water on them, or uh, striking at their core, then yeah, This is good to know. Aye. Do they fight in any particular form or style? Well, they, they would fight hazard? you. Uh, well, you ever seen a house on fire? <laughs> he kind of gives you like a, a very honest look. Like Sex raises his hand. I have. I, I, ha I do not believe I have. Uh, yeah. I like how Zach is just, let me just proud of saying that I have. Let me just have let me just heard. remind you that we set a whole fucking uh, halfling encampment on fire, just passively as Rail walked yep. by. Just proof. oh right, we did. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> oh, specifically, God. Zach's is the one that did that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. oh for yes, I have. too. Yeah, I specifically, have. Zach's. <laughs> the elementals of their plane fight not unlike that. It's very overwhelming. It's very all at once. They will seek to overcome you all at once with their form. Some of them may just attempt to move into your space. Um, instead of trying to strike you with a limb, they'll just wash over you like a wave of flames, uh, which is understandably unpleasant. So, bottom line is, they are keep moving. Keep striking. Aye. Don't stand still. Uh, keep your head low if you can. Uh, easy for us. Taps the top of his head. Uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, um, if you got any uh, um, cloaks, things that like flame retardant. They do have a cloak, but it is very flammable. Yeah, maybe want to not have, be wearing that uh, going in there. I was not planning on it. Aye, any incendiaries or flammables that you carry, you may want to not have with you, Strip. obviously, going in. <laughs> Keeper, lo <laughs> Keeper looks down at his drinking gourd. <laughs> his little cup of very, uh. very flammable. <laughs> very, uh. very flammable liquid. Yeah. What are you talking about, baby? I go in there with this drip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Aye, but uh, in terms of fighting styles, they will just rush you again and again, seeking to consume you all at once. So if you can, spread out. Uh, stay low, you know, as you would attempting to navigate a building that's burning. Navigating a building burning... A burning building. Mm. Navigating a burning building does not seem too difficult. Well, you say that now. <laughs> it kind of like gives you an honest look of concern because it's not going to be easy, but you know. Caper. Very fast. Very For your fast. sake, I it, hope so. It's true, he is very fast. Oh, good. That's. I do that. <laughs> he just looks like, like nodding his head, <laughs> like, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for this information. Of course. And of course, if you can if you can avoid it at all costs, don't try to fight it with weapons. Like in melee. <laughs> Even Magic. if you are striking it quickly, uh you are still hitting fire so you know it is still very dangerous if you can hit it at more than uh, a short distance away from it then you know it'll keep you safe if you must what? get close do be careful what about this and about i'm this? going to summon one <laughs> i'm going to summon one of my are the arms of my astral self he goes Oh, right. And he kind of like <laughs> makes a gesture with his with his arm for you to like hold it out. All right. So I hold it out. I do flex it. I move it around a bit. Like gives me uh, it, like it extends five feet past my normal foot range. Or yeah. My normal striking range. And he goes. That might actually work. And he, he kind of like gives you like a surprised look. And he's like, Yeah. All right. Ah, if you could stay out of this range here, and he, and he gestures, like, to the end of your natural striking range. Um, and he goes, and you stay striking at this range here, and he, and he gestures to the additional five feet that the, uh, that the astral arms give you. And he says, that should keep you safe, at least from hurting yourself while you're trying to fight it. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Classic Magic. Uh, be colder? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, thank you, Kara, gifting tier one sub to Thank you so much. Dex looks over at Keeper and says, We're definitely going to have to tell Rail about this, otherwise, she might try and constrict it and then be in the world of her. If she decides that would be a good idea, I feel like that is a very important lesson for her to learn. <laughs> Zex chuckles at this and says, Maybe, but still. Mm. You know, no, giving, giving giving counsel, counsel uh, is something that she also needs to, to learn. Or well, at least taking counsel. Uh, of course. She needs to, to we should do get used our, to as well. I agree. Right. We should do our best to relay as much of this information to our party as possible. Aye. To better our cause. I'm, I'm pretty good. You good? I believe I have the information I desire. Smart of you coming and asking questions first. We've certainly lost a number of people who didn't have the same sense as you, so... Preparation is everything. It See, that's was... what I think. Points his, <laughs> points his pipe at you. And it's like, that's what I've been telling people. They don't listen. It was his idea. Keeper points at Zax. <laughs> Not a smart move. Well, yeah, that's why I had it. <laughs> he, he doesn't say that like with, with any kind of like. He says like, of, of course. Like, what other way is there? <laughs> yeah. You know, just walking into fights without knowing anything about stuff that you're fighting and getting fucked up <laughs> is usually the way of it uh so, so yeah blown you... up too many things for uh for him not to consider the future yeah uh certainly working at pars they've been impar they've imparted upon you in years of working in that shop uh a 
a knowledge of just, you know, ask questions, please, all the time. Which is uh, why he carries a so shield. Yeah. So, with that, um, with that knowledge imparted, uh, you guys can poke around here a bit longer if you want, or head back. Zax is good to, to poke around, but just mostly just observing things, not really doing anything in particular before heading back. All right. Keeper's good um, to head back. He'll head, he'll head back when Zax is good to go. So, um, excellent. All right, so you guys head back. And on that, um, as you guys are hanging around in your quarters, um, you do, uh, at precisely 8 p.m., get a knock on the door. Zax will open it. Uh, you see, uh, standing at the door, a person you do not recognize, uh, a dwarven woman, uh, is standing there. Let's get that. There we go. What? How does she respond to having the door opened by a goblin? <laughs> um, roll me an insight check. That's waifu material in there. Pretty good. I am also going to use my flash of genius to add an extra four to that roll. Oh, four. Okay, so fifteen <laughs> altogether. <laughs> um, there is like, I mean, she was expecting something bizarre. She's not exactly sure what she was expecting, but this was a little outside of the realm of what she was hoping to see when the door opened. Uh, and she kind of like looks down at you and. There's like a just the, just if she, if she could like curl her lip up in like eh, like there's just like the slightest hint of like I would rather point. not talk to you. Um, so <laughs> she, sex, sex, sex breaks the, the silence, silence and says, "Can I help you?" The ancestor. Oh oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. He, he turns yeah. around. Uh, Is this the like, woman? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He, he, he She's a little more cleaned up, uh, and her hair, else. instead of being braided up into like a mohawk, is now down. Um, and she's got like a large stone hammer strapped to her back, uh, and like a number of like leathers and furs that she's wearing. Zach, Zach will turn around and yell into like our our room. Sizes. Door. Uh, yes, uh, coming. And Sizes comes to the door. Uh, Zach, Zach will, will try. slowly pokes out of her bucket <laughs> and looks at the lady. <laughs> yeah, she's like standing at the door and very square in her stance and like gives like a little Zuko wave. Mm -hmm. uh, like, <laughs> like, hey there, uh, Zuko here, uh, Zuko kind here. of thing. She gives like a little like show of one of her palms you see that uh without any of like the soot or ash on her hands uh that her hands are very calloused uh and she gives like a little wave with one of her hands and goes right so uh you ready yes, yes i yeah. i'm just the whole time Vrail's just staring at her and she can roll insight if she wants to know what the fuck i mean by that stare <laughs> <laughs> She, as uh, as uh, Sisi's approaches, like offers her right elbow. Sure. Okay. Sisi's uh, accepts and puts her arm. Yeah, uh, and then she like looks up to the rest of the group, uh, kind of gives everybody a scan over until she finds uh, Vrail, gives like a <laughs> stern nod, uh, and then leaves. <laughs> Yeah, this it's is like... basically looking at every sibling until uh, Vril gives the dad <laughs> stare. <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like it's like um, uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, car oh, scene. <laughs> oh, that's a natural. Boy, that's that is fun. a natural twenty on that insight. Um, yeah. Okay, so then she'd see the gun. Like. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, she like, knows she's looking at the vulture. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, once I turn green, once they actually green. leave, Flip just turns to the gu uh, to to everyone else, and she's like, "Isn't that something that you do in human courtship?" What are you talking about? Is it? <laughs> Is I have it? No, no idea. No one knows. 
<laughs> nobody, nobody knows. Uh, nobody knows. Sinuses would know. Nobody else would. <laughs> nobody else. Yeah, Keeper shrugs. The fuck would I care about <laughs> humans? Like, is it? Is it? Tell me everything you know about human courtship. Yeah. Tell me everything you know about this. Uh, uh, <laughs> Vrail would like to know. Vrail would like to know about human courtship. I mean, so I mean, if this is what is, it's 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 Vela. Her name is. Was her name? Uh, yes. Um, as you ask, let me just pull up my sheet here. Uh, Vela Ironhide. Yeah. Uh, so if that's if that's what Vela uh, is intending, Zaisis has no idea. Yep. Like, she's just accepted <laughs> a nice a, a nice dinner invitation from a lovely person. Who <laughs> Maybe they're just gal pals. Yeah. Just gal pals. Uh, they were roommates. I have no idea. Oh my god, they were roommates. Yeah. Fucking Saisi uh, is in full historian <laughs> mode. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah she always no, has mushroom guy at home. <laughs> That's mushroom right. There is home. there is there is mushroom ghost at home. Uh, at home. Yeah. Uh, the, the the fellow who works in the archives, who you know, uh, who collects spores, molds, and funguses. Um, and did Saisi uh, even know about that? Like. Also, no, one of I the bigger guys. I think Saya really <laughs> okay. sees just like she. She's just r real sweet and likes to talk to people. And uh, I'm so. I mean, in my mind, for me, like Saya sees is probably Ace, and yeah. she I, might I feel potentially like... also be Arrow. I feel yeah. like Sia I don't even is... think she's sure. She's a ghost, so she's, like, yeah, yeah, like, um... <laughs> yeah, well, of course. But like, <laughs> as she's traveling around, like, she's a very attractive person and almost like ethereally beautiful um, yeah. in that look, and really nobody other than also another ghost, <laughs> and now in this case, two dwarves um, <laughs> have really had any kind of like energy to say anything about that. Uh, so, <laughs> like. Uh, very much like of all the time that you've spent in Automath, like no one has ever had the like attitude or the promise of being able to talk to you in that fashion whatsoever because mm -hmm. you're considered a noble by virtue of the fact that you're an undead, that you're greater undead. Um, so like one of the other ghosts is like really the only person who occasionally would like come by to talk to you about like their nerdy interests and that's Really, just the extent of it uh, is they just enjoy company. Um, yep. <laughs> but yeah, now you are a revered ancestor that's walking around these people. And so this one person was like, I'm going to make a sword for this person. And I'm going to also just shoot my shoot shot my and shot, be like, do you want to go for dinner? Uh, you know, whatever. Um, as she's walking you around uh, the kingdom before you get to sort of like what is not necessarily like the it, it is like the entertainment in district where there's uh, areas that you can go for food and whatnot. Um, and as you guys are walking along, uh, if you want to do a perception check for me, please. Sure. You can borrow mine. Weep. <laughs> 21. Wow. Oh, very nice. <laughs> not um, so oblivious. <laughs> I guess she did borrow mine. Yeah, you see, um, there is just the slightest, like, nod and smile from one of the guards. Uh, and the rest of the people that you pass by on the street give you space. Um, that, like, they, you can tell that they're definitely, as they're milling about, walking through diff different, uh, different areas as you're going down the street, they, like, move aside for you. Um, and you take notice of that, and they're very... Like, there's, like, a lot of, like, smiles and a lot of, like, bowing at you guys as you guys go by. Um, but, yeah, you definitely get the feeling that, like, people are just generally happy to see you everywhere you're going. Uh, Vala, so, like, though, so in, is, in... like, nervous the entire oh, yeah. time. Uh, okay. Is just like, oh, no, people are bowing at us. This, uh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, oh, fuck. Um, uh... And... And, yeah, just, like, uh, after, you know, walking through the streets, there's, like, you know, polite conversation, like, how have you been uh, while you've been here? And just, like, what have you been getting up to? Um, how do you spend your time is kind of, like, some of the conversations. Just, like, she's, she's very interested in just, like, you on many levels. Like, you know, how do you, like, you don't need to eat, but what do you like to eat when you do have food? And, like, 
you know, uh, you don't sleep. So, like, what do you do with the latter half of your day? How do you rest? Uh, you know, what do you like to do with your spare time? What do you do for fun? It's mm, a lot of questions. It is. It is a lot of questions. Oh, oh yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> is that? Uh, oh, but yeah. But... So, at, so at some point, uh, when Vala asks, um what Siasis likes to do with their spare time. She says, oh, hmm. you know, I actually, I I like cooking. I like to cook uh, and I like to brew different kinds of tea. And uh, she, she's like, oh, oh my goodness. And I found this and it, this is so much fun. And she <laughs> pulls out the muffin box. <laughs> the muffin box. <laughs> I would like to show you my muffin box. And that's just the worst innuendo that it was ever Fuck. started by anyone ever. Uh, <laughs> and I finished typing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Correct. Siasi so shows a mechanical contraption that creates baked goods rather than yeah. innuendo. <laughs> rather yeah. than innuendo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She loads, loads it up with you know, the ingredients and then presses the button. She's literally like, press the button and is holding it in both her hands really excitedly, like, oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, as, as it like, the, like its usual little, like, little cranking steam noises uh, that, that come out of it. We're like stopped in the middle of the road somewhere, like in the yeah. middle of walking past somewhere, and I'm just showing her this box. Yeah, and then at, at the end of when it's done, uh, there's like a little a little ring a ding, and it opens up, uh, and the little, there's a steamy little muffin there, uh, and she looks down and she goes, "Oh Sias my god, Sias uses a steamy <laughs> little muffin." <laughs> Hot steamy muffin. Um, what kind of muffin does it produce again? I can't remember. Raisin muffin. Oh, yeah, raisin, raisin muffin. Raisin. Yeah. Oatmeal raisin. Yeah, oatmeal raisin. Uh, <laughs> right. She points down to it with one of her like blocky fingers. Is like, is that oatmeal raisin? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, she hands her the muffin. Is that for me? Yes. Please take it. She like holds it and it gives us like this look of like I will treasure this forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of like briefly washes over her face and then she like squares up again like <clears throat> and like tucks it gently inside of uh one of the sides of her clothes and is just like Right. Um thank you. So, that is so incredibly like, sweet of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I love to to share food with the people that are important to me. Well, nice to know uh, the, <laughs> time, the time number among those people. Thank you. And she, uh, like, you know, uh, takes your hand again and uh, leads you just a little bit further to one of the uh, restaurants that is actually overlooking um, a considerable portion of the kingdom. Um, you see the comings and goings, a lot of the staff and people that are coming in and out appear to be usually of, like, a very noble stature. Um, and... There's, like, a lot of people done up in, like, you know, fancy silks and gold inlays on a lot of their clothing and their cloaks um, as they're coming in and out. Uh, and as you walk up to the, the front, uh, there is a stout dwarf standing on a stool behind a podium uh, who has, like, almost these Coke bottle glasses on, uh, who <laughs> looks down over them at Vala and says, Reservation? And she very confidently looks back up at this gentleman and says, I don't need a reservation. Uh, and nods her head a little bit over towards uh, Syaces. Uh, this gentleman then like sort of trails along uh, following her gaze over to Syaces like midsection and then looks up uh, <laughs> at her and goes, oh, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like st stands up a little straighter, <laughs> so like pats his coat a little bit. Like <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um... <laughs> Diocese kind of just kind of, like she's still like not sure why everybody thinks she's so important <laughs> here, and just kind of like does this like, yes. kind of like, slight look around, like <laughs> yeah, just like oh shit, uh, <laughs> kind of like looks, uh, and then leans back down over to Vala and goes. So, and she goes, private seat, balcony, book seat. And she goes, like, right, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> like, kind of, like, <laughs> snaps uh, some of his, like, sausage-esque fingers. Uh, and uh, one of the, like, sort of bellhops, like, runs up to the front door, uh, looks up to you guys. Um, and uh, let's see. 
Let's see. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you see him like trot up to the door and then look up and go, oh shit. Uh, and almost like, and his hat falls off his, at the top of his head. Uh, and you see, like the guy at the front looks like, shakes his head. He goes, oh, keep it together. And he goes, what the fuck? Like, puts his hat back on and goes, like, right. Uh, bows and like gestures with his hand and goes, please follow me. Uh, and, you know, it escorts you guys to. Um, a, a lovely stone balcony where there's like a table and two chairs, uh, and a, and like sort of a uh, like this beautifully hewn marble railing with like the gold inlays and everything uh, set to it. Uh, as he brings you guys to there, uh, and then brings out a menu and sort of like offers one to Siaces, uh, and. Just, just like looks down at it, looks at her, looks down at it, looks back at her, and is like. Uh, uh, it's just sort of like we don't have one of these in common, so I'm just gonna leave this here. And he puts it slowly <laughs> on the table. Uh, and all right, thank you. Yeah, Valor goes. I'll translate. It's fine. And she's just like right, and like <laughs> bows and walks backwards, like at a ninety degree angle out of the room, uh, and sort of like closes the curtains. Um. And yeah, so uh, the evening goes along pretty well from there. Uh, Vala orders like a, a number of drinks to to see like if you have a like asks if you have a particular interest or like a, a favorite. Um, I guess like Siasis tends to lean just towards like teas, but is unsure whether or not they would have tea here. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, t typically I. I I tend to just drink tea. Do they tea. serve tea here? I mean, they will if we ask. Let's. What kind of tea do you like? Um. That's a good question. What do I feel like today? Uh, probably just like a berry herbal blend of some sort. An herbal blend, eh? Mm. All right. I will check on that. Uh, the, 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 you know, they, you make the request and actually um, coming back out uh, along with what appears to be like a very fancy stein of uh, a very nice alcohol uh, for Vala, they bring you like a little tray um, that has like legs on it. So they set it up next to you that has like um, a fancy looking kettle on it. Uh, that's already steeping with some manner of leaves and berries and such that have been mixed into it. Um, it does actually smell quite pleasant. Uh, and again, the uh, the dwarf as he bows and backs out almost hits his head on the tray, uh, walking backwards out of the room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I see she feels like a little bit bad that everyone is just like so flustered around her, and she's just like, "I'm just me. Everything's fine." Like, yeah, uh, Valor. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, Valor kind of explains that this is an interesting experience for her and for a lot of her people because like you represent uh like the the life's collection of a previous generation of all the knowledge and wisdom that could be passed on from uh, a whole other generation of people exists within you uh and that like you represent that and to see you manifested in this form is something that's so incredibly rare for their people that it only happens really once every century, every few centuries. And even then, it's very brief. Um, so the fact that you have a sustained corporeal form is something that's so fascinating for them. Uh, and it's difficult, obviously, because they don't have a lot of means by which to communicate with you guys. So, like, they, this is, you know, odd because you're an ancestor from a different species like you're a different race uh so it's just weird you know for a lot of them but it's all there's like a great deal of respect like a lot of them have that uh that the very reverence. that reverence yeah um yeah. Well, and so yeah you. that's thanks just that's kind of where they are about that whole situation <laughs> welcome everyone oh did we get i got oh, i'm streaming too hey. <laughs> yeah what's up? yeah what's up hi everyone oh, what up, huh? yeah 
Yeah. We're, we're currently in a, there's a date between a banshee and a dwarf. <laughs> A date. Dora, and and Dora. Dora doesn't realize it's a date. She's just like, what a lovely dinner I'm having with a new friend. Yeah, the banshee doesn't know that it's a date. <laughs> as per tradition. As, as, per, as is tradition. Specifically with Xyces, anyway. Xyces is yeah. just like, what? <laughs> oh, huh? friends. I love friends. <laughs> Oh, cool. More friends. I love friends. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, no. Um, when it gets to the food course, she'll she'll ask you again, like if you have a particular preference as kind of food. Um, she awkwardly asks if you enjoy soup, uh, and yes. then immediately responds with, "I don't know why I asked that. I don't know why that's important. Uh, I'm so sorry." <laughs> like, that's a, that's that's quite all right. Uh, I mean, not everybody enjoys soup. Soup is a perfectly suitable thing to eat. I love soup. I I make a variety of soups. <laughs> <laughs> do you like muffins? I'm trying not to laugh too hard. I am, back. I am aging yeah. quickly <laughs> with the awkwardness of this date. I had the, the brilliant idea to to watch the, the hardcore tea skit. <laughs> like, oh god, the tea skit. Okay, we'll yes. that, yeah. that later. <laughs> there is um yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you carry that twenty one in perception. Um yeah. there is a brief moment where there there's like a discussion happening between some of the servers and the management staff on the other side of the like the large curtains that go into the rest of the restaurant, and you can hear someone saying, All oh, right, we'll bring spirits to a spirit. Right? And they're just like, Darbin, if you make that joke, I'm going to throw you off the balcony. <laughs> like, like, if you ever say that in front of, like, our honored guest, I'll kill you. <laughs> like, very good. <laughs> I mean, like, to, to be honest, Sciences would probably hear that joke and, like, laugh. Yeah, just like, oh, like, that's silly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just like, I won't even hesitate. I will throw you off the balcony. <laughs> like, you fucking dead. I will pitch you right into the afterlife. Like, I will just. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll bring spirits to the spirit. Bill, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate. Uh, and, just like, and leave the restaurant. Oh, when they bring the Goodbye. tea out to you, it is just like he's just like almost like eating his own lips, like just like <laughs> trying so hard to keep him quiet uh, when he comes out. Um, but yeah, uh, they they bring out um, whatever kind of food you would like to order uh, in this particular case. Yeah, let's uh, let's say let's say that uh, Siasis, uh ordered a, a stew with a nice bread. Oh, stew with a nice bread. Yeah, the the bread is definitely not stale, but boy, it's got some heft. Uh, it is certainly like it's heavier and meatier yes. than you think. Um, and yeah, the stew like super hearty. Like the the way you see chunky so soups look on the front of a Campbell's can, like that yeah. picturesque, like big vegetables and and stuff like that, all big all piled into it. Uh, mm. yeah. Speaking of Vala, orders like a loaf of bread and a like roast um oh, to nice. herself which she like very and you can tell like as she, as as the evening goes on you can tell she's definitely a woman of passion like she has like you know she's like you know a haunch of meat in one hand and like you know a mug kind of in the other and she'll just kind of laugh she laughs loud and she talks very boisterously about like her work uh That's and wonderful. about the things she enjoys um that. That's very good yeah, she's like super full of life. Um, the second she sort of like settles in, um, is it Mama Mum's bread? <laughs> uh, she's one of the most renowned bakers in uh, in the area. Yeah. Yeah. No, this so is the, the this is definitely yeah. in a, a place that Mama Mum's bread would find itself in. Um, an establishment that's like this. Um, but yeah, you can you can tell that she's definitely like a, a woman of passion. She's got like a lot of love for life. Uh, and. You know, she she laughs loud and she she you know boisters about a lot of the stuff that she gets up to. Uh, you know, doesn't doesn't talk herself up too much with regards to her talents, but is very proud of her work, um, in a very like strict sense. Love that. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then proud yet humble. 
Yeah, is it, like doesn't doesn't brag too much, but uh, is just like you know very proud of her work. Uh, that like you know she's mastered working with Mithril and and with adamantite, and she's been able to make some of the like finer weapons and arms and armor that uh, the city sees. And most of her work doesn't make it out of the Dwarven Kingdom because it's considered to basically by the kingdom itself considered to be kind of too good for humans. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Uh, they don't often trade out with those people because, like, they can't usually afford her work and, uh, you know, they don't have need for good swords or armor. They wear their stuff and, like, whatever. Like, it's a, it's a difference of opinion. Um, on one occasion, she asks you where the food goes, uh, when you have food, uh, <laughs> after she's done, like, her first drink is just like, where does it go? Like, looking at your torso, <laughs> like... I've never really thought about it. I think it just sort of magically disappears itself because it kind of doesn't go anywhere. It just, it's just gone. Yeah, and she's just kind of like, wow. Like, <laughs> she's really, like... I can just imagine Saiz is being self-conscious about it. She goes to the bathroom and looks under her clothes like, where does it go? <laughs> I suppose I, oh, it's 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 a fact now. Blue Leaf doesn't poop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No she's, need for she's the powder. Just room. She's, um, she's a lady. She doesn't poop. Yeah. She's lady. She doesn't poop. Uh, yeah. She she makes like sort of an offhanded comment about maybe that's where the food goes when you leave food for ancestors and it vanishes like it's that in that fashion that it's yeah. just like any food that you leave is food for the ancestors kind of situation and vanishes to another realm in a similar fashion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Zeiss goes, oh, you know what? Maybe that is. I'm not. Maybe that is what happens. <laughs> yeah, and she's just like yeah, and then like laughs super loud, uh, <laughs> just like. You know, has another drink and keeps <laughs> keeps eating. Um, when the meal's finished, uh, she pays up with uh, actually some of the gold coins that she got from Rail, um, and uh, you know, uh, again offers you an elbow and uh, escorts you on like a walk around some of the higher places in the city to give you like a better view. Um, and it's and it's really just like polite, pleasant conversation the whole time. Um, I see and having a wonderful time. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and and then she she turns to you and she goes, "So you're um you're friends with that with that bugman, yeah?" Yes, yes, we're friends. Mm -hmm. Alright, so he's been <laughs> sitting a lot down in the uh, the old man shaft. <laughs> yes, yes, he does that frequently. Do you know why he does that? Uh, it's a it's a form of training for him. He's meditating. Uh. Uh, I suppose oh, it's like has... communing with the stones. Yes, exactly. Something In a way. Like yes. Ah, all right. We've got, uh, you know, there's there are some, um, you know, holy folks who can uh, speak with the rocks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, they're very rare, though. Uh, so that's 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 very impressive. If he can do that. Uh, hmm. Yeah. No, because the children are sometimes they spy on him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They wait for him to do something, but he doesn't do anything for days at a time, and it's uh, <laughs> they worry that he might need to, you know, uh, relieve himself for eat. But he just sits, uh, and they're not sure what he's doing. So, you know, that's what uh, uh, you know, I, I bet you he knows that. I bet you he's fully aware that every once in a while he's being spied on. So. Oh yeah, Keeper would absolutely know that there are, at the end of the tunnel, a collection of small children, some of whom already have beards, uh, watching you. Uh, and occasionally you hear like the whisper, like, he's just sitting there. I'm bored. Shut up. Like, <laughs> like from the end of the tunnel. Uh... I'm just, I, I just, I just imagine tiny baby uh, dwarf beards. And it's yeah. the greatest. Yeah. Just these like and little poops. Like, the little poofs they stick out in all directions like they don't have enough weight to like go down yet so like yeah. when they do have beards uh, it's like a little little pom pom on the uh. bottom half of their face basically <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing them daring each other to try and get closer <laughs> yeah oh none of them came within like a hundred yards of you they are they're all like super super distant and like every now and then like 
maybe through, through the past week, like twice, you'd hear like, there you are, you little shits. And they'd be like, a <laughs> <laughs> woman chases after them, like, and shoes them off into the tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm almost imagining once like at some point Keeper's just like I'm a you know I'm gonna play a trick on these little kids or whatever and then they show up and they sit there for a while and then eventually Keeper goes boogity 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 <laughs> <laughs> with all his arms yeah, yeah just with all his spectral arms. arms oh my god hold, just like <laughs> using key point step of the wind so that I can travel like 300 Instantly. feet per second right up to the <laughs> bat and they're like <laughs> <"What?"> <laughs> <laughs> And then they just died because. Yeah, like, <laughs> and then they died. Their spirits the left. Brain, they're just like, we can't leave Toby. Leave him. He's dead. And they just run. And they're gonna go home and tell their parents about how they left for their friends for dead next to the bugman. But then he, they still come home later, and they're like, "What happened?" Like, I don't know. I woke up in the tunnels. Nothing happened. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, the 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 evening goes by uh, very well. She occasionally makes like one or two jokes, uh, you know, like awkward puns about rocks and metal um <laughs> and kind of like is just delighted she's laughing oh yeah no it, when you laugh uh vala laughs like way harder uh like, <laughs> just, like there'll be a moment where she waits like eh, to see if you laugh and when she laughs she like does that like throw her head back and just bellows out like joy uh <laughs> that like echoes off the cavern um Oh, but so yeah. like me. Like, oh, yeah. See, I, I knew I was hilarious. Like, I'm, I'm certain I must also do that. Like, yeah. Oh. I, must, I must. It's I, a nervous I thing. It's a nervous yeah, thing. Like, a, a yeah. wait, like, right? 10%. Right? Like, uh, and then when you laugh, it's just like she just like erupts like a volcano of joy. Yeah. Uh, and just like, uh, like fun. hands, like belly, good belly laughter, like hands on belly kind of thing. Uh, like gives you like pats on the shoulder and stuff, and is like happy that you have a sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, eventually she uh, then walks you back uh, to your home um, and is like just super pleasant uh, the entire time. Thanks you uh, for a wonderful evening um, and gives you a gentle kiss on the back of your hand. Oh, Sias is kind of just like. Like in response, kind of like curtsies gently, she, like a you know. <laughs> oh yeah, she Aww. uh like makes a fist with her right hand and like punches her left shoulder in like a salute almost and like gives a a respectful bow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for a lovely evening, Bella. It was very very nice. I had a wonderful time. Oh, of course, no, thank you. Uh, any time you'd like to spend again, just let me know. Uh, you know oh. where to find me. This is outside the door? This is outside the door to our place? Uh -oh. Outside the door, <laughs> yes. Can I, can I see if I hear them? Passive? Oh, uh, yeah, roll, uh, roll perception. No. 18. Oh, yeah, passive? What <laughs> 18. 18. Yeah, you, you, you hear this exchange. All right, then I'm staring at the back of the door. <laughs> yeah. The moment the door opens, you're just, like, filling the doorway. <laughs> I'm still seated in the same spot that she left. <laughs> just staring. Eyeline already meets. Position, expression, just everything. Is like, you haven't moved, perceivably. Um, so I see just kind of open, opens the door. It's like, oh, hello, Vrail. I nod. Have, have, a, have a good and night, Bella. She, like, fixes a gaze on you. Gives you like another like mm, like stern like nod and then uh, turns uh, and like you know squares up turns and marches her way uh, off into, <laughs> the, into the streets of the city. <laughs> Zach will kind of look over at the rail I and need then look over to the door and then look back over to the rail. It's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> doesn't say a word. Okay, doesn't say I'm, a word. I'm, just I'm, stone. I'm, at, like, I'm stone hesitating. Stone. But between asking a question or not, so I need to flip a coin <laughs> to see if she does. Okay, well, in the oh, meantime, so I see she's just kind of, like, waving and, like, smiling sweetly as she, like, closes the door. <laughs> as soon as oh, the yeah, door she, is closed, she, Her normal. face is, like, super red as she's waving to you, uh, and 
like stumbles only like a little bit as oh, she's God. leaving. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's a two. That's so a two. What do you mean? No, what's the question? Loops <laughs> looks at her. Did you guys make eggs? No, no, we didn't cook. Rail looks we taken food. aback. We were <laughs> in the restaurant, and they made us food. I just- <laughs> OH MY GOD! I like the stern, the stern, like, parental figure. It's like, do you guys make eggs? It's just like, <gasps> Oh my god, and you then... don't just ask if they made eggs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And Siasis goes like, we didn't do any cooking, what are you talking about? <laughs> you went out for dinner. Okay! <laughs> and Frail's- Someone just- d like, yeah, Garrick just, like, dies in the corner <laughs> of the room. Like, Vrail, Vrail is trying to figure out now, like, how it would be possible for anybody like... to create children with a dead person! Ghost! <laughs> yeah. It's a ghost! Yeah, he, 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 like, walks over and, like, gently pats the side of the bucket, and he goes, Oh, no, sweetie, can I make eggs with an ancestor? Okay... Okay. Is <laughs> is still so confused by that exchange. She's like, "What do you mean? Is it is it bad luck to people for people to cook eggs with me? Do I need to cook my eggs by myself? I mean, I normally cook yeah. You, so you I... see, Eric like puts his hands on his waist and is like, oh, "Okay." Uh... Vrail Vrail looks to Sizes and says, "She meant sex." Oh, oh! All right, so you're just gonna say it. All right. Um, Biasi's right. kind of like folds her arms as she's kind of sitting there. Thinks she's like, "Why would they think that I was just having dinner with a friend?" I well, <laughs> because it, it was a romantic dinner. Oh, yeah. uh, well, <laughs> is that what that is that what that was? It, well, she yeah. very... he kind of like looks at looks at like Siasis like. Was it, or were you just having a good time? I... I mean, I, I don't... Well, now that I think about it, I don't know about Vala, but I, I thought I was just having a lovely time with a nice new friend. Well, it's possible uh, that she may fancy you, which uh, makes sense. Uh, but it just... may be more of a, um, like a deep friendship and reverence more than, a, like, with romantic undertones. And he kind of, like, looks at Vrail and he goes, I have a daughter, you see, I know about these things. Uh, <laughs> I'm a <laughs> dad. <laughs> I'm a I mean, what dad. Makes... I, know the, I know teenage girls. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. <laughs> what yeah. makes me surprised is how... The A-team uh... has two dads. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Bra <laughs> Rail and <laughs> uh, Rail and Gary. Yeah. Rail and Gary. Yeah. Uh, what I'm surprised about is how s closed and secretive she was about it. I'm not used to that. How do you mean? Well, my people are just quite direct about it. About asking hmm. for romantic interaction. Oh. Was she not direct? And he looks over to Sciences. Uh, Flu chimes in in the middle. No, 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 I saw it! Like, the the lady offered her elbow, and I saw this in a human book one, and it it, it, it ended in the book where they had lots of children. <laughs> she Flew. just, and just like, <laughs> silently, like... No. I don't know how to tell you this, but Sciences <sighs> isn't a living creature. No, of course, no, I, but... She says um, the flu. <laughs> no, 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 doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic gesture. No, uh, no, lots of friends walk uh, with linked elbows, though it is commonly a romantic gesture. It's not exclusively, right. Um, gets I mean, she might have just wanted to spend time with you to see how you'd react and think to her presence, and then go from there. Yes, I, I suppose. You probably, I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't want to color it too much, but given the culture, you may have just made her entire life just by spending the evening with her. Just as you did, going out for food. Well, I, I'm 
always happy to make other people happy, so... Yes, of course. So, let me get this straight, she said right. to Derek. Um, <laughs> when one date happens mm. between dwarves, it is like a lifetime partnership? Oh, if they get along, uh, you know... <laughs> no matter, you know, some folks, uh, dwarves can be a bit cantankerous compared to some races, so we don't exactly always get along with each other. Uh, case in point, the nobles who were present at court. Uh, so what you're saying well, is that because Siaces and this woman had a pleasant evening, they are now, in in the woman's eyes, partners. No, uh, that would be up to the person who was asked to then respond. Because, I mean, I mean he looks back over to Sizes. I'm assuming the evening went well. Uh, it was it was lovely, yes. It was, it was drinking and eating and merriment, yeah? Yes, yeah. Right, so, uh, one would say then that it would then be up to you of whether or not you'd want to do more. She did ask you then at that point... You know, if you wanted to see again, then that was in your... That was your choice now. Yes? Yes. I'm trying to All make right. sure that, that she... Like... That Sciases is not beholden to anybody because she didn't know about a custom. Oh, no. No, no, no. Uh, it's all very, like... Yeah. If, you, if you were to ask <laughs> a person out, they would have to agree... And then, following that, it is then upon them to uh, make a gesture, if they would like to continue in that regard. If they would just like to be friends, then they'd mention so. Yes. Okay. Hi. <laughs> right. so the, the, the realization is now, like, finally, like, it's setting into Saezis now that she has to, like, go and tell this lovely person that if, if this was indeed a date that, uh, she's a ghost. <laughs> 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 or 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 you could just or you could just ghost her. Don't oh, dog. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Wait, but does Sias use? Just ah. Uh, no. Oh no. Very, okay, I I I. Now I'm looking something into wiki. And Nabs to books. Drugs. Oh no. <laughs> Like, I don't know, us grugs would just offer the, the, the other person the a pretty bug that is the same color as the grog, and if if I eat it, that means I, I want to lay eggs. That's, that's, that's how it works. <laughs> and with my people, it doesn't matter what you do together. If, if an arrangement wasn't agreed to, the arrangement doesn't take place. As in, um, multiple people can get up to whatever the hell they want, as lo and... They aren't beholden to anyone unless that discussion was had. Right. That's fair. Yes. And even in that, it doesn't change their ability to have those types of arrangements with other people. Hmm. Very well. <laughs> okay. Well, and he like <laughs> hands together and goes, glad we've got all that out of the way. Uh... So I'm so, yeah, starting you... to like panic slightly now, actually, because she's like, "Oh no, how am I supposed to? L I have to, I have to, like, I have to let this per like." Let this down. Like, Existential like, crisis by a ghost. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> I don't no. want to. I don't want to hurt her feelings. I we had such a fun time. I want to be friends. I hope she's not. She's just, like freaking out. <laughs> she's like, "Oh no!" Hashtag the birds and the bees by Garrick. <laughs> 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 uh. Yeah, so I was definitely just like kind of having a, a little like moment of like <laughs> a little moment of anxiety, like oh no. That, Zach will go over and, and pat her on the back before returning <laughs> to to start working on his uh, on his rod. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, hear oh, no. I was like, I'm gonna be quiet and see what kind of silence follows that statement, and it was the one I was. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, yes. Um, following that evening, um, eventually you guys uh, finished gathering up everything, 
<laughs> yeah, oh no, I just wanted to say hi, but absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> it me. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, finish wrapping up um, the things that you needed. You get your sword. Um, do you go down to pick it up in person, or do you have it delivered to your place? I go in person. Okay. Um, well, I have to uh, exchange mine, right? Yes. Part, part of the uh, arrangement was I get Part of the her. arrangement was to, to exchange. Yeah. Like the courier was just going to like pick it up. Um, nope. But if you, <laughs> yeah, if you want to go down in person, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, down in person. Dope. Uh, so you head on down and uh, <laughs> sciences, do you go down with? Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Dope. Yeah, okay, I, cool. I do. I have to, I have to talk to her. Yeah. No, so you, you show up um, as you guys go in. Uh, she's very happy to see you guys uh, coming along and is uh, just, you know, smiles uh, and lays upon the table, like unwrapping it, um, a mithril scimitar in the size that you can carry and use. Um, it has a matching scabbard with it. The rings that were on the back of it have been laid in, and you see some very ferocious snakes uh, carved in up along the blade. <laughs> so I, I test to see if the, the like the rings move, like, uh, like like if they do the jingle jangly. Yeah, if they do the jingle jangly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because um, I, I give it yeah, a no. I give it a swing. Yeah, um, as you swing through the air, you notice. Good God, the blade is a lot lighter than you anticipated. Um. It you could swear it's it's made out of paper. Like mm -hmm. it is, it weighs almost nothing um, with how you're wielding it, and it is so sharp. Uh, and when you swing it through the air, you hear the metal sing a little bit. Uh, it rings a little as you swing it through, not just from the the rings that are jangling on the back of it, um, and, but like just as it's crossing through the air, it makes that like magical, almost ethereal, like ringing sound as it goes like through. Hum. Yeah. I uh I look at the detail work of the snakes. It's good. Baby snakes. Mm. Um, yeah, Doc, this session's gonna be about fighting a dangerous elemental. Two hours of interpersonal drama later. <laughs> uh, yeah. D &D. Uh -oh. <laughs> because of DND <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah. Um, um yeah, yeah, no, the, for... the the snakes are, like, masterfully carved uh, into the sides of the blade. Vrail looks over the pearlescent uh, coloration of the metal, and, like, her eyes, like, rest on the, like, cobra-like snakes on the, on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, How... You see... Um, the snakes on the side actually have a similar um, fanning to them, like a, the cobra fans that are on the sides of their head, uh, similar to yours. Vrail looks... Um, like, romantically thoughtful. Oh. Like, she softens when she sees it. How, she says to the, the woman, how hard would it be to inlay that pattern with Onyx? Oh, not hard. Uh, she, she looks as like, actually, I could do it right here. It won't take me more than a few minutes. How much? Like, Vrail's, Vrail's voice is softer. Yeah, she kind of like looks at it. You know, turns like side to side and she's like, I mean, the inlay is so shallow, wouldn't take more than maybe an ounce of onyx to do this. And no. I How wouldn't much? charge you for it with the with the mount the sword's been been worth really. Here we go. I put that like gently hand it back to her. Yeah, she like, you know, nods, takes it over to um where the where the forge is, uh, lays it down and uh takes like a small bit of onyx and actually like 
puts that into the forge, uh, pulls a few like levers and turns a large crank, and you see um, a stream of magma start moving uh, past in the area behind the forge itself. Um, and it takes a few seconds, but you see the uh, the onyx itself actually start to melt into a liquid form, uh, which she then carefully picks up, and she's got like uh, a breather over her mouth and like goggles over her eyes, and she like gently sort of like drizzles uh, a large like uh, line of it across the one side, and then takes like a cloth and wipes it down just- and. All of the onyx just just goes into the uh, to the inlay, um, and she like kind of it's almost just like with a single motion she just like gets that on one side, uh, gives it a second to cool, and then turns and does the other side. Yeah, so so just like the the outline and the pattern of the mm-hmm. hoods of the snakes or whatever has this onyx set in it now. Yeah, excellent. Like, yeah. Frail is kind of, uh, like, trying to, like, look over the shoulder and watch it happen. Yeah, you see, um, as as she finishes it uh, and cools it, she, like, puts it in a sheath and then uh, hands it back to you. You notice that the blade is almost supernaturally clean. Um, that the entire time, there is, like, even when she picked it up with, like, her soot-covered hands, it left no markings on the blade whatsoever. Um... And yeah, so you may add to your inventory Enchanted Mithril Scimitar. Um, This has the enchantment where it changes sizes with you. Uh, It also has two other functions to it, one of which is Mage Bane by being uh, Mithril. And I can explain more of that to you later because that is sort Mm -hmm. of a custom mechanic. And the other of which is, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, Where is it? Uh... There's like a specific. There's a specific uh, thing. God damn it! I'll tell you about it later. Uh, oh, gleaming. That's it. Gleaming. Ah, so it's it's it can't get dirty. Yeah, it just repels like grime like my, and dirt and like my cold. armor. <laughs> yep. That's the one. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it has the gleaming quality to it as well. All right. Uh, so, uh, as for, like, striking stats, what what's it like? Um, same as the sword that you had, plus one. Excellent, thank you. And yeah. so then I... Uh, I take the... Uh, the sword from the table, and then, like... Remember that I have to hand over my previous one, and then do so. <laughs> and oh, yeah, I'll... she, like gives you a very respectful bow as you do so. I I look to her and I say thank you. And she and like I... again like makes a fist and like pounds it against her left shoulder and like bows to you. I take a step back away from the thing uh, 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 like away from the table and I transform down and I give it another couple swings to see if it works. Yeah, the the sword immediately changes size with you, and as you swing it around, it, it does that same sort of ethereal tinkling like hum as it swings through the air. I nod and I leave, and I shapeshift back right. once I'm outside. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> shapeshift up. <laughs> uh. Hey, look how hard I can cry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. Um, So after she leaves, uh, then um, Vala turns to Sizes and goes, It's good to see you again. I hope your trials as they are are uh, swift and leave you with little damage. Thank you. Thank you. Uh definitely a little bit nervous I want this to go well but I have faith in my compatriots I know we'll do our best uh Vala I wanted to talk to you in specific (laughs) oh alright she like kind of grabs a nearby rag and starts like wiping down her hands as she's listening Mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, it, it, uh, seems I might be uh, a little bit <laughs> clueless to some things. <laughs> uh, and I was made aware that, uh, there's the possibility oh. that, uh, the outing that we went on the other night, uh, had possibly, uh, romantic intent? Is that, uh, what that was for you? She, like, kind of, like, smiles a little bit and nods, uh, and is just like, hi. Though, I respect that, you know, you you being an ancestor and me being a blacksmith, that that's uh, probably not a thing, but I still was happy to spend the time with you regardless. Yes. Well, um, first of all, I want you to know that you being a blacksmith, uh, you are, I, that's nothing to, has nothing to do with your worthiness to anyone. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, thank uh, you. Um, you're incredible at what you do, and you're a lovely person, and I had a wonderful time with you. Um, but in, in the interest of being transparent, I, uh, at the moment, am not uh, looking for uh, any kind of romantic relationship, but I would absolutely love it if we could stay friends and just enjoy each other's company as well. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Zach. Zach. <laughs> hey, at the end of the street, she's being transparent! <laughs> Get <laughs> it! Good <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah, she just, like, smiles and nods and is just like, I? No, that's fine. I, I again, just just as happy to be your friend uh, uh, I'm very than happy anything to hear else. That. Wonderful. Okay. Great. I just wanted to make sure we were good there. Of course, no. I no, of course not. I uh, I didn't I didn't uh, imagine that that was gonna go a different way than it did. Uh, but I am happy that I got to spend the time with you, regardless. And again, if you'd like to spend more time, let me know. I I will. Thank you. It was. It you was... know where to find me. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd better go see if. The rest of my team uh, needs anything of me, so I shall take my leave and let you get back to your great work. She gives you like a warm smile and a wave as you head out. Okay. So I see, like nods and smiles warmly and waves as she leaves. All right, awesome. Uh, so, is anybody else doing anything leading up to the business at the arena? Yeah, Siasis leaves, she closes the door, and she goes like... <gasps> I <laughs> <see it. laughs> Good. Yeah. Good, oh I my goodness, I was so afraid. <laughs> I named my new sword. You've named your new sword? Yeah. Ooh. That's what I do. Oh. Yeah. Peeper just resumes what he's been doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, as you've Spooky. been training, yeah, like uh, very occasionally you might see or hear children like super far at the end of one of those uh, tunnels, like spying on you, trying to figure out what the hell it is you're up to. Um, what's the name of the new sword? Fang of Nisthus. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the sword is named Jerry. Jerry, it's Jerry. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, it's Jerry. The oh, Fang Jerry. of Nisthus! <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the idea of oh, like, yeah. Rail walking up to a guy and looks at her sword and like, Fuck him up, Jerry! <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> so funny. That's awesome. I love that. That's very cool. Uh. Well, so, you said it was pearl white, like like a pearlescent light color oh, steel. Yeah, right. very very pearlescent, very opalescent in that mm. sense. Uh, no. At some point, sorry. Yep. Uh, at some point, Zax and Keeper would want to relay the information <laughs> they learned about the fire elemental to everybody else in the party. Yes, that's probably an important step to take. Yeah, that like a good idea. That dosing it does work, uh, and that you know you guys. Um, will be will be like you know being, the, the being within five feet of it probably isn't a good plan yeah 
fighting Not it melee is hard. Discomfort. It will just try to overwhelm you. Um, and yeah, like you and spread out. Uh, and don't try to engage it in melee. Is was effectively the a lot of the stuff that you guys got given. I need to bio for a sec. Dope, go for it. So be during that time, Floop will try to, uh, probably try to, like, you know, cheer herself up, even if she's a bit depressed, to still have to destroy a fire elemental, because to her it's still wrong. <laughs> so she will probably do something like, uh, try yeah. to see and, like, gather information of, in, onto an animal that dwarves are not used to see. Like, it's rare to see it. Yeah. Would Floop make it known to the rest of the party that that was the issue she was having? I know she talked talk to with uh, Garrick about it, but would she tell anybody else, any of us, that that was, well, you know, what was on her mind? Well, after receiving the information, she will say what, she will say that's on her mind, and that to her is still various sensible subject even if the reasoning behind it is to it is sound yeah well the arcanists me zax and i spoke with said that we are not destroying or harming these creatures they are simply challenging us to see if we are strong enough for them to submit to the creatures are not being destroyed. Or enslaved. Floop wobbles her head in the face like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's just gonna... I'm gonna do something to cheer myself up instead of being depressed while the fight, so... Yeah. <laughs> this the Sciences see that, like, Floop is, like, visibly unhappy. Well, Keeper shrugs and goes back to meditating and training and yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what she'll probably do is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that bears are not a common thing. Um, not. Well, I mean, there's no animals really that live down here, save for like some some smaller cave dwelling creatures. Uh, but uh, if you if you approach them and you tell them that like you know I have like. Look at this is a bear. They'll be like, "Yeah, I know what a bear is." <laughs> okay, I want to. I want to. I, I I want an animal that they are not used to see. Okay. Seahorse, and that is. Uh, Seahorse definitely they... would be one of them. <laughs> yeah, and that is quite large because what she's going to do is is that she's going to offer to the kids if the parents are okay with it uh, a piggyback ride. Oh, from the animal. Okay. Yeah, if you like if you summon up uh an animal or change into an animal and then offer like rides and stuff like that, then like yeah, that's that's, that's definitely something that could happen. Yeah, but she uh should probably turn into something, something like uh <laughs> what is uh she she's gonna turn into a fucking hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun one. Uh the big water baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, okay. Dangerous water baby. No, so yeah, dangerous. Very, like, uh, dangerous very dangerous um, yes, Isis is gonna go with um just in case. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, and it, and it's super like the, the the kids love it. Um one uh grown gentleman sheepishly asks if he can have a ride on the hippo. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, sure. She's just super happy. Yeah. I'm back. No, okay, cool. Alright. Um so cheering yourself up and having yourself a good time goes by, and eventually you guys make your way back down to the arena. Mm. You guys are brought sure. into a large round stone structure. The bleachers that are there uh, are filled with a number of dwarven people, a mixture of common folk and craftsmen and uh, nobles alike, all sitting shoulder to shoulder uh, with bated breath. Um, standing in the center of, uh, that space, uh, along with, like, a large sort of ritual circle that's been made in the middle of the room is, uh, Steelcap, the leader of the Arcanist Academy, um, standing there with his usual pipe as you guys come in. Okay, guys. 
before we do anything. Do you think we need, like, an extra little barrier just in case we get hit? Or should we get more things that are just pummeling this thing? And Warden is muted again. <clears throat> I shouldn't be. I should be. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, now, I can hear you now. now. Yeah. Okay. Be I imagine better defense would prove useful. All right. All right. All right. We ha I'll... have plenty of pummel, but we do not know how hard or how fast this thing strikes yet. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. As you guys move in, um, standing at a sort of like viewing platform um, just over top of the arena itself, you see High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer uh, standing and staring down at you guys. Um, the the cheering and revelry that uh, is going on through a lot of the people that are in the audience, you see, uh, dies down almost instantly when he raises his hand uh, and a silence falls very suddenly across the room. Uh, as he looks around, very stern look on his face, uh, and then he, he speaks, his, his voice kind of echoing throughout the, the cavern itself. Here, let me just get like so. There we go. Today we are on earth. We bring these new friends. Ancestors, queens, and bookmen alike into our kingdom. They seek to face an old hatred buried deep beneath the world. And should they survive, the core will be theirs for their ship. I activate my animated shield and then equip my other shield. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> like, turns on. Um, he then turns his gaze down to uh, Steel Cap, who's standing in the middle. Begin the ritual. Uh, Steel Cap gives him a nod back, uh, and you see he takes like a long, hard drag uh, on the pipe that he has, uh, then turning and breathing uh, into the the center of the large circle that's there in the middle of the arena. Uh, there is a rush of fire that comes out of his mouth when he does this uh, that seems to like spread across the, the middle of this circle, sort of in, in, encapsulating the whole of the circle. You see the floor that's on fire underneath it start to buckle a little bit. Um, the, the stone doesn't seem to crack or shift, uh, but it does seem to start to bow like uh, melted plastic almost in a sense. It starts to sort of like heave a little bit and then it opens straight downwards. Um, Before... This gets completed mm -hmm. while our entire group is still together. Uh -huh. Zax will take his sack of like little scraps and turn it into his uh, his Eldritch Cannon. Ooh, cool. Specifically, the Protector variant. Okay, dope. Yeah, uh, it transforms as you need it to. All right. And it will start start pulsing, I guess, three times because it's every six seconds, uh, to give our entire party uh, some temporary hit points. All right, everybody gets D8 plus your intelligence modifier. So you roll that, and uh, everybody gets to add that as temp HP. Nice. Five temp HP. Well, I was I was planning on having it proc three times considering we're doing it before it happens and i can have it proc every six itself seconds itself on each creature of your choice within 10 feet of it a number of temp hp equal to a d8 plus your intelligence modifier does that stack it doesn't stack temporary hit points don't stack you take the highest okay oh, okay so yeah if you wanted to do it three times and then just take the highest of the three yep okay yeah so roll again Oh, 
Okay. Six. And if you just if you just yeah. press up on the, the keyboard while you're there, there we go. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. There Everybody, gets, Everybody 12 gets temporary HP. 12 HP. Wonderful. Excellent. So we're gonna add 12 temp HP to your uh to your things. Okay. Um in that uh, when the floor bows down and a gout of fire starts to erupt, um, you see, or rather you feel sort of like a rumble as a huge fire elemental comes uh, rushing up out of the hole. Uh, Bigger than me? Yes. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> it is huge size. Okay, huge it size. Is, yeah, it is huge sized. Uh, so three by three it squares, is. and it comes... Uh, erupting up out of the fire uh, in a blast of flames. Uh, looking around the the room, uh, the people in the audience go fucking nuts, uh, and it like sort of like looks about, uh, turns its gaze to um, Thorgrim, um, and speaks something in a dwarven tongue. Anybody know Dwarven? Uh, I kind of I will, do. Floop, I will allow you with an intelligence check to understand what it's saying. Because your, your grip on the Dowie tongue is a little loose. Zax is going to use Flash of Genius to give her an extra plus four. If you know oh, hell yeah. To do that. Okay. Uh, uh, in intelligent. In intelligence. Yeah, let's roll an intelligence check. That's a save. That's a save. Which is different. Oh. Give me intelligence. There we go. So 11 plus 4, so it's 15. 15. Um, the way that it's speaking appears to be very basic. Like, it's it's super guttural and very, very toned down. Um, so it's not very complex. With a 15, you're easily able to, to make out um, the... <laughs> two main words that it speaks to the king. Earn strength. The king nods once uh, at the elemental. It immediately turns its attention to each of you. And with that, I want you guys to roll initiative yeah. as we move into the arena itself. Yeah. Zax will shout, spread out. Is there Everybody a spread right out. Oh yeah, there's lighting uh, stuff on this map, which you're not gonna be able to see until yeah, some people black. get into there. Um, so <laughs> let's like, there should be torches and stuff, but some there we go. Just like put you put you in the map there. Uh, so then other people, if you just drag and drop your, um, you know what? I'll just move y'all in here. I'll just I'll just get y'all in. Beep bop boop. Uh, there you are. There's Zax. Um, so we go one, two, three, and we just need a size C's. There you are. You're for is some there reason. A combat tracker? Uh, there is a combat tracker. We just got to open that bad boy up on there the side he here. And I got to remove all these people. So remember, when you're rolling for initiative, uh, you click on your character's icon to make sure that you have them like highlighted, and then. Uh, roll for initiative on your character sheet. That will put you directly into the uh, into the initiative order, and then I can sort you guys. That said, uh, How? we're okay. gonna go and tokens. I'm gonna reroll it then because I didn't select myself. That's okay. Um, I can yeah. still just like oh. fix that if you made that mistake. What? I did make that mistake. Okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, okay. The chat. Gotta... Right. okay. I, I, I did as well. Uh, okay, cool. It's uh, <laughs> so neat that nobody likes instructions. <laughs> I did it. Overzealous. I did it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's cool, guys. It's neat. Um, all right. Uh, let's. Okay, yeah, I've got to get it. Uh, I've been on mute. Here. Oh, oh, I, I, oops. I rolled, I rolled my initiative before you were like, don't forget that you got a <laughs> tracker. And I was just like, fuck. Good yeah, fuck. exactly. That. I, I was God like, okay, it. I think yeah. I did it, and I'm like, oh no, I didn't select my character, and you said it. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Um, so you were at ten originally. Yeah. Um, that's fine. All right. I'm so like, remember. So okay, sure. Thank you. Four. Let's see. Floop. 
I rolled a 19. You rolled a 19. 19. Okay, so remember, you, you select your icon, and then on your character sheet, roll initiative. Um, that will put you in the initiative order over here, and then I'll be able to change your number to reflect the uh, the the 19 that you originally got. Cool. So then that's a 17, so we'll put you a 19 there. Uh, and then this bad boy, bonk, he got a 6. Oh. So cool. Uh, so we'll put that in descending order. He goes last. Uh, why? By the way, why is Rails initiative eleven point one? Because <laughs> my uh, initiative modifier is point one. What? Yeah. Why? It makes it so that if somebody else also gets the same score, then she would technically go first. I see. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've All... never seen that before, but that's fine. Right. Yeah, Kara, it's you wouldn't be having fun if you weren't hurt cats. <laughs> it's a it's an option you can have on your cheat so to oh. automatically uh like re roll mm -hmm. like uh ties, like tiebreakers. Um, yeah. my initiative is plus zero. Like <laughs> Yeah, alright. <clears throat> alright. And so, Zax, you are up. Floop, you are on deck. Uh, you are standing in front of a gigantic, towering inferno of a person. Okay, so. First off, Zax from here is just going to move one space. Okay. And from here, I'm going to first cast... Enlarge, reduce. Oh. Concentration up to a minute. You or you cause a creature or object you can see within range to grow larger or smaller for the duration. Choose either a creature or object that is <laughs> something that's not worn or carried. The target is unwilling. Uh, it can make constitution saving throw on a success. So it's a DC 15 constitution. Uh, and if it succeeds, it does not. Uh, nothing happens. Uh, I'm Never willing. Right. Yeah. But I'm going to have to step, I'm gonna have to step forward because I'm about to grow and I'm kind of packed in here. <laughs> Either that or I'm going to end up shoving Flute back and Sices to the side. So you cast Enlarge on uh, Keeper? Yep. All right. Uh, I don't have, like, a Mario Gains Mushroom sound effect on my board for some reason, but, uh, uh, yeah. With Vrail in the party? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I, yeah, that's that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you uh, grow to large size. <laughs> and Eek bug. for my bonus, uh, I'm going to command my uh, homunculus servant to okay. shoot a, a, a blast of force at the uh, at the thing. All right. Uh, give me one moment. Just double checking. As the fight's going on, I am going to make sure everybody knows that it's like, do do have, if you can, uh, have your, the stuff you want to do on your turn prepped ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, this is mostly just... Monkeys. I do apologize for this. Okay, so it is... If it loads. Okay. One D four plus four. Uh, but it's it's my spell attack, so it's one one D twenty plus. Four. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you do like a little like poo uh, as you shoot force at it. Do you have to roll to hit, or is it just a, a yeah, one? Yeah, it's, it's roll to hit. All right. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, as the uh, this is like your shoulder cannon, right? Yeah. yeah this is this is uh, the monk uh, monk attached to you. Yeah. It like switches into the little cannon and fires like boom that little force uh, out of it, uh, and you see it go just pass through uh, the part that you were aiming for. Uh, it seems to just go straight through it. All right. So hard to pin down. Hard to pin down, but yeah. still. It's it's, for, it's form shifts and moves a lot because it's made of fire, so it's like hard for you to pick a spot to be like, I'll shoot it there and I'll hit it, and it just seems to it shift it out of the way at the last moment. Yeah. Alright, uh, anything else to do with Uh I am going to use the rest of my movements 
and spread out. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there! And I'm done. All right, cool. Floop, you are up. Keeper, you are on deck. All right. So, since it's a big fight, I'm going to start immediately with the big guns. Oh, shit. And <laughs> let me grab my... Elemental pulls out a huge can of raid. <laughs> <laughs> oh dang. Anti elemental oh. spray. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Yeah, no. Uh that is a dexterity fourteen ice storm. Good lord. Eight bludgeoning and fourteen cold. So it's gotta make oh. that. That DC fourteen deck save, eh? Where do you where do you put the ice storm? Where do you where do you load that in? Uh, from that to there, it's it, it's a uh, twenty feet radius. Radius. That's radius, radius, not radius. diameter. So it's a forty yeah. foot diameter. Yeah, it's a it's forty feet across. Uh, this That's this huge. block. Yeah, it's fucking gigantic. Um, okay, so what, so what corner start do you want to start from? I'm gonna start it there. There? Yeah. Okay. So we'll say, <laughs> let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So we'll go like this. Um, like so. That would be like that? How does how does that look? Yeah. That's perfect. Uh, it's a little little too big on one side. Should it be so, sh is it well. circular or square? 25, 30, 35, 40. Um... I mean, the grid you says circle. If you wanted, the grid is uh, uh, says squares, but yeah, it's, up to, it's always up to the DM. Yeah, that's just because a that's too... actually a really big deal for me. Yeah, um, <laughs> if I, I, think, that. I think you can see. Yeah, my fair orbs. enough. Yeah, because because the diagonals are still just five feet away. I guess it's still yeah. the squares is. So it's still just that thing. So is I that that a good thirty foot storm? auras? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that yeah. works. Raging up, uh, immediately the air uh, turns frigid as ice just starts to pound down from the sky in that area, uh, just wailing on uh, the guy. Let's see if he can make that dex save. 17, so he does, but that's only for half damage, though. Uh, so we're going to grab that, we're going to grab him, and that is that. But you see as um, he starts to like move quickly, sort of dodging around the larger chunks of ice, but some of the chunks of ice still come through, um, striking into him, and you see he... Uh, there we go. Um, like, as the ice chunks pass through his flaming form, they sizzle, and he reacts very poorly to that. Uh, so, yeah, that damage is still done. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? And I'm gonna... I, I'm just gonna move. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of movement, so I'm just gonna put myself uh, right there. Uh, ah, how do I move? There you go. I'll Yay! There you go. I'm, I'm right. spread out. I'm spread out. All right, Keeper, you are up, and Vrail is on deck. All right, Keeper will, now that in his, he is larger, spin on his foot, just kind of do a quick pivot. Pivot. Uh, so he is now facing Rail, like he's now ba back towards the elemental. Mm -hmm. And he is going to activate. Do, do it. Arms of the Astral Damn. Self. Arms of the Astral Self. Yeah, you explode with these additional astral arms that come out of you. That are um, now largely, you scaled up even larger. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So when you make an unarmed strike with arms on your turn, your reach for it is five feet greater than normal. Um, being large size doesn't give you yeah, an additional five feet yeah, of reach. Yeah, I know. Though. It's just, they're just scaled, um, it, they're just scaled they're bigger, just bigger. Kind of like proportionate because yeah. I'm bigger. Like they're, they don't give me any extra reach or anything other than normal. But they're just, they're proportionate. Okay, to my size. Choice, you can cool. see within 10 feet of you. Um, so he's not within <laughs> 10 feet of you yet. 
He's not? No, this is no. 10 feet. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. I see. Is that, like, that, little that little circle so that I'd step for, So that I'd step even more forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. The yeah, ice storm is not continuing. It's just difficult terrain in there. Yeah. But in order to be affected by difficult terrain, your whole token has to be in it. Yes. Um, so yeah. So I'll get as close as I need to, judging based on what I learned yesterday or the other day. Yeah. Uh, the astral arms that you've created start immediately swinging at it. Uh, if you want to make a roll to attack, because uh, activating this gives you a chance to attack, doesn't it? it it's uh, it, but it's its own attack. Um, mm -hmm. It's it needs to succeed on a dexterity saving throw, or it takes force throw. damage equal to two rolls of my martial arts die. What is that saving throw? Uh, 15. It needs to beat a six, uh, 15 on dexterity saving throw. Hey. And that is a 16, so he does make it. Okay. All right, so he, he manages to not get hit with that. I will then spin around and uh, let's hit him with an yeah. attack. Yeah, get it. Oh, yeah, that 18, you do hit. Um, as you're coming in with it, uh, you, like, open up. Uh, with these attacks, you do manage to uh, find that uh, that striking at it with these arms does uh, seem to have an effect. Uh, roll for damage. Um, also, because of my key empowered strikes, my my unarmed attacks are counted as magical for overcoming uh, damage resistances. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I roll for damage. Boop, and then it's plus one d4 because I'm uh, larger sized. That's correct. Uh, um, slash roll 1d4. Alright, so 11. Alright. Did Fluke roll damage for the Ice Storm? Yes. Yes, yes. It, it was automatically okay. rolled. Oh, it was auto rolled. 8 bludgeoning, 14 cold. Oh, I see it. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. I guess that's that's why I missed it. I wasn't looking for that. Okay. Alright. Uh, so that's a hit. So, Anything else you want to do with the journey? Yep. Then I will. Am I within its reach? Oh, wait, no, it doesn't matter because I'm mobile, so. Yeah, you hit him. Here, uh, here. I'm going to kind of, like, skirt around him a little okay. bit. Remember, it's difficult terrain in there. Yep. It's oh, double, right, yeah, it double... is. So, so I'm going to skirt this way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to take my second swing. Okay. Um, or, wait, no, it would be Astral Arms. That one. Astral arms, yeah. 18 hits. 12 force. And then plus, slash roll 1d4. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. So, yeah. You, 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 like, you managed to dance around and you're striking at this. And you're finding that when the astral arms are like striking into its form, that you're actually gaining purchase there. Um, that the flames of its body seem to react more. Like, it's, it's not like you're punching through an actual fire. Like, it seems to actually be connecting with something, uh, hitting its form with the astral arm specifically. Um, it has a look on its face like it is not exactly sure what to think about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's never had anyone punch it before. Uh, so... <laughs> Dude, does it look at me? Do I do I make eye contact with it? Like, does it kind of... Yeah, so like, well, I mean, like, what you can kind of imagine is its head. Uh, you see those, like, a pair of, like, very brightly burning eyes, like, sort of, like, fix on you as you're close to it. Uh, I'm going to just lock eyes with it for a second, give it one of those, like, it's just a glare. Not, not like a menacing glare, but just kind of a, like, you know? Yeah, like, I get it, yeah. Uh, lock, locking eyes with somebody across the room kind of thing. Like, you see me, <laughs> I see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then All I'm right. Going, and then I'm going to jump back over here. Copy that. Uh, that's leaving its... It, it uh, I, have, take it. I have the mobile feet. He's uh, got mobile, so if he hits me on a turn, then I right. don't get attack of opportunity. I don't even him, need but, to hit. I just need um, to swing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Right. Is that your turn? Uh, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Vrail, you are up. I slither directly up to him. Boom. While casting uh, Wrathful Smite. Where is it? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Which uh, I um, don't. I just cast it. It's not the roll itself. Um, okay. Uh, I can. There we go. 
Wrathful Smite! Yeah. Uh, the next time you hit with a melee weapon attack during the spell's duration, your attack deals an extra 1d6 psychic damage. Uh, additionally, if the target or creature must make a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you until the spell ends. Um, as an action, the creature can make a wisdom check against your spell save DC to steal its resolve and end the spell. And... Um... I am going to take a swing at it. Uh, as I take a swing at it, it erupts into uh, like blinding pearl white light, and I'm gonna pump a level three smite into it as well. Hell yeah, smite! Um, <laughs> uh, where is it? Where's my new fancy weapon? Uh, can I can I just where's the attack? There it is. Uh, plus... Oh, also, before you say whether or not that mm -hmm. hits, okay. I'm gonna expend another channel divinity and add plus 10 to that, to the to hit. Add 10 to the hit? Yeah. All right, I'm can. gonna... I will... All right, yeah. No. <laughs> 20, 22. Because uh, um, yeah, I like that you were like, before you say anything! Because, <laughs> like, because it specifies so before the DM says... Yeah, before the DM. So, well, because it's like you are supposed to like do the roll, do the math, and then choose to add this yep. before you announce the result. Yeah, it's um, like there it is. Yeah, there it is, right there. Um, you get a plus ten bonus to the roll. You make this choice after you see the roll, but before the DM says whether or not the attack hits or misses. So yeah, yeah. twenty-two <laughs> hits. Uh, so yeah, roll that. Roll that sweet smite damage. Uh, first off, it's Light. the weapon damage. Smite. Uh, so ten plus. Because I have fighting style uh, dueling, is that's where, it, where that two is coming from. Um, yeah. So it's what four d plus four d eight radiant damage. Uh. For a level three spell slot. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. All right. So we'll do. And. Oh. And oh. slash Good R. Good God. Uh, roll 1d6 for the Good Wrathful God. Smite, right? Yep. Plus three psychic damage. Plus three psychic damage, got it. And uh, yeah, it's a creature, a make a wisdom a wisdom save, please. Uh, against the fear effect? Yep. It does not get affected by fear. Oh, it is not affected by fear? It is not. No, Damn. you definitely, like, you bring this thing down, like, hard, like, bam, and, like, it does that additional <laughs> damage to it, um, and then where you're expecting to see that magic, like, for it to resist or steal its nerves or to see it take hold, it simply doesn't react. Excellent. Um, an entity of hatred made manifest appears to be immune to being scared of things, uh, uh, or at the very least, it just powers through it. Uh, <laughs> if anything, it gets more pissed. Vrail, Vrail notices that it is just, sh it shrugs off the fear, and she grins, like open mouth grins. <laughs> yeah, and just like, like yeah. <laughs> yes! Um, so that was, what, 35 damage in a swing? Oh, yeah. I have uh, <laughs> definitely taken that off. That is brutal. Um, all right. Siaces, it is your turn. And then is yeah, the he... elemental and then Zax. All right. Um, so. Yeah, that's my turn. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, your turn. I... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to ask. Uh, okay. I have, I mean, it's oh. probably not going to quite matter that much. But before I, the... I before I forget, I apologize. Um, okay, yes, you did manage to strike it, and you are within five feet. Yep. So you do take. Uh, is that a magic? Uh, is it just straight? I take damage. Yeah. Okay. Um, if one you damage. move within five feet and then attack it, it is oh. you take one damage, but it's okay. a it's a d10 fire. Nice. Um, you got lucky. That damage. You, you sweat a little bit. Eh, it's a sauna. Not it's even. Fine. It hits her shield. <laughs> no. it, it, it hits the shield that I gave her. Well, the oh. temporary hit points. Yeah, it hits the shield. Yeah. The temp HP. No. Um, I, I took it. All right, sorry. Sai so Seats, it was your go. Okay. Um, so I, I have a feeling this is only going to matter for flavor, but uh, the uh, the ice storm that Flute put down, is it? Uh, it's it's only Is it only not doing damage but is it's only difficult terrain it is not doing damage yeah yeah it's not damage yeah. over time is 
It, are the is the is the ice still coming down? But Actually, just not yeah, doing it should be. Damage? And that's why it's difficult it's, terrain, or it's is it per turn, terrain isn't it? There's... No, no, no. It's it's, it's the uh, difficult terrain until lasts the until Floop's next turn. Yeah. Yeah, and then it stops. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So it, anything it's that starts already. turn in there, or like, yeah, what, or is in there when it gets attacked, or uh, moves through that space, takes that damage, and treats it as a difficult terrain. Yeah. So, so the okay. flavor is. Is there, there like snow or something falling? Right yeah. Now? Did, did I take that are damage there, walking into is it? There... No. no. Okay. No. 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 It's so just the... difficult to run. It's just gotcha. difficult yeah. to run until the uh, start of the next turn. Is it if you were in the range as I cast it, you would have yeah. taken damage, but no, you yeah. entered afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Is it difficult to rain because there is still hail falling and it's kind of getting in your eyes, kind of thing, or is it difficult to rain because now the ground is icy? Ground's icy. Ground's icy. Okay. All right, that's fine. Uh, I don't know that that's going to matter for that anyway. Um, Siaces is going to uh, direct a very large scream towards the fire elemental and cast... Oh. Yeah, that's fine. Cast oh. Shatter. <laughs> now, here's a question shatter. specifically for Shatter. Shatter says that a creature made of inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal, has disadvantage on this saving throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I'm Would trying to click show description. I know. I've been getting that too. Weird. We're just yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with all of the, the stuff. I don't know. I don't know why it's being like that, but that's roll twenty. That's um, fine. So yeah, it's DC fifteen Constitution save, which it will make with disadvantage. Uh, let's have a look here. No. Ding, ding, um, yeah. No, no, so no, with a six, he fails oh, it. That's eight thunder. Um, so yeah, it definitely takes that. As you like release uh, that sound specifically, where did I where did I put that? There it is. Uh, so as you like let out this this banshee wail, it slams into it, and you see it definitely take that damage. Uh, and it like takes a second to sort of shake that off. Uh, before it continues acting. And that scream echoes for 300 feet. Yep. <laughs> or, no, meter, meter. Yeah, 300 meters. Um, 300 meters, yeah. Meters. Some of the... Uh, some of the... Some of the guards and people in the audience kind of shudder uh, at the sound once it kind of, like, washes over them. Um, I'm going to say, uh, real quick, Sices, roll me a perception check. Perception. Nice. 19. Uh, you see Vala in the audience going like, Yeah, give him hell! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, fucking full, full cheer. Um, yeah. Hell yeah. What, what were uh, people like about my smite? <laughs> oh, there was definitely cheering. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and my ice storm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I am going to, uh, turn to Floop and, and say, I believe in you, friend. We're doing great. And give her bardic inspiration. Yay! And that's my turn. What does All right. bardic inspiration do? Uh, you get again? to add a d8 roll. To pay to add any of your rolls. Yeah, you can choose one of your rolls and you can add a D8 to it. Yeah. One, just just once. Per per inspiration that I give. But yeah. Mm hmm. All yep. right. Okay. All right. So on that, it is now the elementals' turn. Um, as everybody's been kind of like laying into it with different attacks, uh, it erupts. Uh, with energy uh, bursting with laughter. <laughs> uh, and rushes uh, in this direction. We're going to go 20, 30, uh -oh. 40. Uh, as it moves through your space, you catch on fire and take another D10 of damage. Just straight? Yeah, it is just a straight. Oh, cool. Another one. Uh, <laughs> no, love that. Um, no saves or anything? 
Uh, nah, no saves, and you Sick. are immediately set on fire. Sick. Uh, on your turn, um, yeah, until, yeah, you can take an action to douse the fire. Otherwise, you continue to take 1d10 fire damage at the start of each of your turns. Sick. Uh, it will then go... <laughs> now I have to decide whether or not oh, that... Oh, like, no, it's like... Uh, I am going to take an attack of opportunity. And that's yeah, nine fire damage to your size piece and yeah, uh, swing an attack of opportunity at me. Uh, let me see. I might be able to do something crazy with an attack of opportunity. Protect. Defender. Wait, when a target you can see attack. Does this count as an attack? Uh. Oh, it's no. not. It's not within five feet of me anyway. Okay. Um. um I mean, it's it's still leaving your threatening space, so you do have the opportunity yeah, to well, make um, uh, a thing. But yeah, it doesn't count as an it, attack. It literally just like thing. runs through you as it yeah. runs by, and it's made of fire, so it burns you. Yeah, so I'll take an attack of opportunity against it. Oh, also, yeah, wait, I have fucking <gasps> yeah, I was multi attack or extra attack. Fuck. Uh. Never mind. Yeah. So I didn't <laughs> attack that other time. Gotcha. Oh. Uh. But this is one swing. Boop. That looks good. Boop. 12 damage. Okay. 12 damage. I will take that. I'm sure it counts right. as magical. Yeah, you noticed when you swing your blade and you swing through the elemental um, as it passes you, your blade seems to cut through its form like a like steel parting flesh. Gorgeous. Um, so it makes it to there, it then moves to here, Mitchell, engulfing baby. you, Enchanted, and you baby. take one damage, so cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, you get an attack of opportunity as well, uh, if you want Siaces and Floop as it moves this way. Okay. What am I able to do attack of opportunity with? And to there. I can't and do anything, is... so I'm like, eh! Bonk, and that's nine damage. Ah. Oh. Ooh. Attack of opportunity. What am I actually able to attack it with? Is it literally just like a, a, a weapon? Your melee, weapon. We a weapon yep. attack? Yep. Yeah. You can do unarmed if you don't have a melee weapon on you, which you just like roll to hit plus. It's like a d20 plus your strength, um, if, and it's one damage if you succeed. If you have the warcaster feat, you can use a spell instead. Yes. I am. Yeah. Well, I'm a bard, so I don't think I get that. You can if you have a spellcasting class, which is a bard. But, oh. But it's a feat that you would have to purchase with have to your take, feet. Yeah. yeah. I have a dagger. Well, then hit it with a dagger. dagger. If, you want. <laughs> if you want to hit it with your dagger, you have the opportunity to. I, I just let me do it. Do no. it. Do well, it. Let me do it. How do I freaking click on the? Hang on. Hang on a second here. What's going on? Oh, yes. It should be in your attacks section under your exhaustion oh. level. Okay. Where are you? Right, Zach, you took you? nine damage from that. Yep. yep. I've updated. Hilariously. Oh, there it is. Okay. Weep? Okay, no. Why is it updating hey. on your token? That's weird. Well, it's because my uh, temp HP is not updating on my token. Ah, that's it. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah, temp okay. HP is not shown on the token. And that is dagger for piercing. Uh, dope. Yeah, you like, as it rushes past each of you, um, it does like, you know, as, it, as it's going by, you manage to slash at it. Uh, the tip of your dagger, as it moves through your space, manages to just catch the end of something hard uh, at the center of it. You don't do a lot of damage, but you do manage to like, tink off of something. Uh, you chip something uh, as it basically rushed past you, lighting each of you on fire. Um, it stops its movement here, and then immediately starts to attack Zax, because it's going to do that instead of trying to use its next movement to go for uh, our our boy over there. Let's see, does a 16 hit you? It does not. Okay. And... A 9? Nope. Clearly not. Uh, and an 18. Uh, does Ty go to the defender? Uh, if your AC is 18, then an 18 would hit you. Then that one does hit me. 
it's right. whoever's roll. Tie goes whoever to whoever rolls. rolls. Yeah. yeah. Um, cause like your, your AC is basically the DC to hit you and meeting that number means that it's a success. Uh, it does nine more fire damage to you as it basically just starts trying to like grab at you with its huge flaming hands. This is a melee attack, correct? Um, not in the strictest sense. No, it is not like a, he's not physically hitting you with something. It's just mo Me it's moving it, uh, its form over you. It does straight fire damage. Mechanically, but, it's a melee attack. Mechanically, is, is it a melee attack? Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Also, you had right. to roll an attack to hit him, so I would assume so. Yeah, it's well, I mean, you have to roll an attack, attack to hit with spells as well, then so I was like, I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then I am going to use my reaction okay. to activate a charge on my repulsion sheet. Okay. Just holding. Da, 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 da. Expend one of the things. Shield. Push the attacker 15 feet away. Let me just double check. Do 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 hey. do 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 do. <laughs> mhm. Mm <laughs> Magic shield that can push targets. Well, that's that's propulsion armor. No. This is Repulsion Shield. This is Repulsion Shield. It is not listed. Hold on. Because I know that you, like, grabbed that and put that in, and my question is, if it is a huge class creature, I do not know if that would push them away from it's you. It's magical push, though. It's, it's not magical a physical push. It, one. It, oh, even it that's not limits. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't, I'm just like, say, it doesn't give any it doesn't kind of say anything it. though because it's artificer which is just like <laughs> like almost all of artificer's mechanics are like I don't know maybe whatever <laughs> like, it's super not like just say things. filled in yeah like I'm just gonna kind of do whatever and you're like really uh, yeah one sec I'll, and yeah I'll... that's exactly the thing it just says it pushes anything 15 feet away from you no Tear matter what and you then know? you gain uh, charges uh, against the yeah it doesn't it doesn't specify because like yeah. even like magical spells that r dictate it shoving creatures will say that like that creatures of a certain roll. size resist. That's a deal. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll say it. I'll say it works. Uh, I'll say five, ten, fifteen. It gets shoved back that way. Oh look who's back! <laughs> uh, look who it is! <laughs> All right, and yeah. that is its turn. Zax, you are up. Floop, you're on deck. I was gonna say it's not—it's a crystal suspended in fire. It's not I'll like it, it's got friction or mass behind it, you know. You turned an angry snake into a flaming angry snake. Oh yeah, Zax. Uh, top of your round. I did take the, the fire damage from that. Oh, that's another ten damage. Yeah. Oh, um, oof. That's. Scary. And you can, if you want to spend your action this turn, you can, and it just immediately puts it out. Otherwise, you maintain the status. I'm going to. Put it the fuck out. Okay. All right. So that is your action. Uh, quickly dousing the flames. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, have my my turret, which is still clinging to me because it's a tiny creature at the moment. Uh, give me some extra bonus uh, temporary HP. Okay. I'm All right. That up for a second. Uh, yep, 1d8 plus 4. Okay. So I get an extra 10... Uh, 10 temp HP back. Nice. Yeah. Nice! Uh, and now I'm gonna... Like, I don't... I don't like this. I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> And that's my turn. Okay. Um, all right, Floop, you are up, and Keeper is on deck. Uh, I'm going to poof away the fire. <laughs> like, all right. Oh, that I takes should... your action, sorry, and also uh, you take seven damage uh, just as you put it out. I'll need to do a concentration check. Ow, 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 I'm not frog legs! That is correct. Uh... 
Yeah, how many times did you take damage? Uh, three. Three times, yes. That's three concentration checks. Uh, what is that? Intelligence check? or where, where uh, It's a D10 plus constitution. And uh, and then you have to and it's and it's a DC ten, okay. or um, half of the damage, whichever is higher. So it's what am I rolling? Um, it's a D twenty plus your Constitution modifier, and because each time that it hit you, it didn't do more than twenty damage, so yeah. it's it's just a DC ten each time. Okay, don't tell me the results right off the bat because it depends on whether or not I can use Flash of Genius on this. Okay. Okay, so that one I'm not going to use Flash of Genius. Uh -huh. That one, unfortunately, will make my spell fail. So, okay. Keeper will not be big. Oh, he loses big? He loses big because it's a concentration spell. It is a concentration spell, yeah. So rolling a three, even with Flash of Genius, um, that wouldn't succeed the ten. No. Gotcha. Uh, so that does shrink you back down, sadly. Do my astral arms stay the same size? <laughs> yes. Big beefy arms! <laughs> yeah! Like... <laughs> Funny though, that may be... No, it doesn't. <laughs> like, like they, they still wouldn't be... They don't give me any reach or anything. It's just literally just a size difference, but... Yeah, okay. yeah, just like big... If you want... You know what? Just for the sake of how funny that is, sure. You just have to use big... You got anchor arms. Like, <laughs> you attached to you. Popeye. Well, they're mantis arms, but they're just huge. Yeah. All right. Um, Is that your turn? Uh, I have oh, a bonus sorry, action I can now. do. You, you do have a bonus action you can take and move. Mr. Carrots! Oh shit, it's Mr. Carrots. There it is. Unicorn Spirit! Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Carrots! On the field! Where do you put him? Uh, I'm gonna put him uh, right uh, next to Vrail. Uh. Beautiful. I love it. And Mr. Carrots has a aura. Yes. Which we're gonna make a bright pink. Uh, and what's the radius in the aura? Ten feet? Uh six feet and, uh hold on, I'm gonna send it. Right yeah, now. what's the uh what's the aura 30 on that? Foot. Spirit totem. Thirty foot 30. radius. It's thirty foot radius, alright. Bam. Love it. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's Oh, that's, that's a lot brighter than I thought it was gonna be. Somehow, right. some, like for some reason, uh, I like I can't see its aura. You, I can't everyone either. else in my party can't see the auras I put on my on my character. My character. Ooh. Can you see it now? Ooh. Yes. How did, you <laughs> How did you do that? How did you do that? Um, where it says aura one, uh, player permission C edit. You just check mark the box C. Um, and that changes it. Let's... I don't have that let's option for mine. Let's tone that down. I can do that for you if you would like. Yes, please. Um, so for your first aura or your second one? Both? <laughs> Bam. There we go. Thank you. All right. So then there is this big pink aura coming out of this thing. God, I wish there was a way that I could make that not as insane. Isn't there an RGB? Um, there is not a way to make it, like, less... It's just you pick and a color from the the thing that's there, okay. but there's no way for you to make it like unless you know less. the hex code and type yeah. it in yourself. That has like alpha channel stuff built, like basically controlling the transparency is not something I can do without uh, more stuff. That's why way, I chose the the color. So, uh, let me see. It's Mr. Carrots. Yes, and everyone in the aura and it outside the aura because that's how it works. Gains seven HP because it's my druid level. Including the fire element. Uh, so max HP or temporary HP? Max or HP. Max it's, HP. It's HP, HP. It's not. Ooh. And it's friendly creature. I can decide who is healed and who is not. Oh, it's this healing. I, yes. Okay. That's different. Mr. Carrots shows up like, <laughs> What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, is that your turn? Dope. Okay, Keeper, you are up. Vrail, you are on deck. 
All right, so after I just witnessed this huge thing, like basically move around and set my friends on fire, <laughs> I keep her thinking, like, I, I, I realize that I've, I've got to slow this thing down. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> this right, so. cannot continue. Right. Also, now, he is within five feet of Vrail. Yes. Correct? Yep. So yes. attacking him would mean I get the flanking advantage, right? Uh, if we're doing flanking. We have been for the rest of the, for. We have we have been. I just I, I do apologize. I did mean I did mean to mention this. Um, because there's a lot of mechanics in the game that function like flanking. Things like a rogue's uh, abilities. Things like also the uh, the barbarians like pack tactics and animals have pack tactics and stuff like that, which functions as flanking. That if you are attacking a creature that one of your allies is engaged in melee with, then you have advantage on attacking. Yeah. Um, but. To, to maintain the, like, you know, legitimacy of those abilities, I've decided to be like, if you're attacking a dude from both sides and you don't have one of those skills or one of those skills isn't in play, then it doesn't give you advantage for that. All right, fair enough. All right. Either way, I'm going to step forward five. Dope. Step forward. I'm going to, I'm trying to, I don't want to get within. Yeah, that's, that's within five, five feet of it. This so is? Where, this yeah, yep. that right there is within five feet. Yep. Okay, well, I, oh, I only need to get within 10 feet, so that's yeah. that's within 10 feet? So okay. right there, that's a good spot. Okay, so I'll I take one step forward, mm -hmm. one small step forward. Now, the size difference between my, my now form and his form is pretty, pretty big, but I, I now have these two huge floating astral mantis <laughs> arms that, I, that I'm able to strike with. Big, beefy bug arms. <laughs> All right. oh. I will, going, I will strike out. Strike and 18 hits. Now, thinking back to what the, the guy said earlier, that this thing is alive and that it is energy. It is emotion. And if it's energy and if it's alive, then it has key. I'm going to pass the key energy through my strike as I hit him to attempt Hell to yeah. stun him. Ooh, stunning strike. Uh, you can interfere the flow of key in an opponent's body. When you hit another creature with a melee attack, you can spend a key point to attempt a stunning strike. The target must succeed in a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of your next turn. Uh, so yeah, you deal seven force as you Ooh. just start like laying into him. Uh, and let's see here. Okay, and it has DC to make a constitution 15. saving throw. What, what is the DC? 15? 15. 15. It ah. succeeds. Uh, so it main maintains consciousness as you're like reaching in and you're like slamming away at it. You go to like just hit it right in the crystal, and you see the crystal like shift uh, in its torso to one side just as you like go to make that blow. So you do still like slam into its body. Your your fists appear to be making contact with like a physical object when you're hitting it with your with your astral fists, uh, <laughs> but it narrowly dodges the crystal out of the way of that stunning strike. In that case, I take a second one. <laughs> take, take a second swing at it and fail horribly. Oh yeah, the the mm. next like you're like you keep you keep swinging at it, uh, going hard, uh, and like it it starts to like shift and twist its form in such a way that it starts to like dodge and move around some of your attacks. Um, All right, your your usual martial arts uh, are like failing you a little bit because it doesn't have physical biology, so like it. You're like, oh, if I swing here, then I'll like put you off balance, and I can swing at you here. But it doesn't do that, so <laughs> you're yeah. just like, ah, uh, um. I'll take another swing. Another swing with a 16 misses again. Hi, retro. All right, and that's my turn. And a uh, 10. Well, no, and sorry, well, that's my attacks at least. I still get to move. Yeah, you can still move. Five. Yeah, it's like, haha, I'm gonna punch it in the spine, and he's like, haha, my spine is near like my shin now. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. punch it in the dick. It doesn't have a dick. <laughs> it's fire. Yeah, uh, but like you know, yeah, swinging at the physiology of a truly non-physical creature uh, it proved it's to be a little Disney. strange. Um, but okay. So I took um, my swings and then I retreated. <laughs> <laughs> you like, and yeah, you like definitely made that flank. Vrail, you are up. Sai sees you're on deck. Okay. Um, so it, you said it like I could take an action to get rid of the uh, the on fire debuff, yes, right? Yes, uh, that is now, correct. You are on fire. That I does have... remind me. That's 10 damage. 
and then you can take your action to uh, okay. to take the, the the fire off. Now, if you want to, you can just not and just keep I could, doing stuff. I could just not. Um, yep. That being said, I have this racial ability to shed my skin as a bonus action. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Boy, all right. That it mechanically, it's to get out of grapples. Okay. Uh, can I use it to stop being on fire? You can say no. It's, you know what? I'm going to allow it just because of the spectacle of how truly gross that is. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, so you, like, you, you were like on fire and burning and you just like, Wah! and like your skin just flies <laughs> off suddenly. Uh, and you hear a bunch of dwarves in the audience go, oh, shit. <laughs> is that <laughs> So yeah, as a, as a bonus action, I'm not on fire anymore. Okay, so that's um, your bonus action. So you yep. still have your action. Um, I, on my action, I am going to cast um, this at third level. Armor of Agathys. Um, so you gain 5 temp HP, and if a creature hits you with a melee attack uh, while you have these hit points, the creature takes 5 cold damage. Per Dope. level. Per level. Ooh, that's a lot of cold damage. And it's a lot of uh, extra hit points. Yep. So I'm back up to 15 temporary hit points, that's and I do 15 of... cold damage anytime it does a melee attack against me. says level three. Yep. Dope. Yep. Okay, awesome. <laughs> that, that is, yeah, you get yep. 15 temp HP, and then that gives you, uh, it will deal 15 cold damage to it, uh, so long as you have that HP and it's attacking you. All right. Um, and I will take a step back. Ooh. I love that it says the components for that is a glass of water. Or a cup of water, I guess. Cup of water. <laughs> a cup of water. Cup so of yeah, water. all of my scales Somebody just hit like... Somebody you and you just throw the water in their face like, how dare you? So <laughs> I shed off all of my skin really, really fast. And then like the, the scales under it. Uh, like spike out into these like gl like opalescent glacier spikes. Uh. Yeah, and you do that, and then you step away from this thing, and it lets you. Uh, <laughs> like, and I just grin, like I'm like yeah. locked, you know, like my head it doesn't does change. not swing at you with that attack of <laughs> opportunity because you just covered yourself in icy bullshit. Yep. I'm like, mm, no, nah, I don't want to touch that. That's a smart. Um, that's a very smart elemental. Yeah, he ain't stupid. Uh, he does not have a low intelligence. Uh, is that your turn? That's my turn. That was a bonus right, action, go. an action, and a movement. Sai sees you are up, and then it's the elemental, and then Zax. Okay, so I need to... Uh, I need to take an action to get rid of the fire? Yes. You are on fire. You take eight fire damage, and then if you want, you can spend your action this turn to reduce, like, to put the fire out, or you can leave it there, uh, but if you spend the action to put it out, then the effect is removed. Bummerino. Okay. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, um, in that case, yeah, I guess Iasis is going to take the time to unfire herself. Okay. Uh, and then she's going to move a distance. Um, let's say one, two, three, four. That's my movement. Six, five, six. I'm just gonna get like a good, a good stance away there. All right, and we will put the fire marker out. Yep. So you are you are now doused. Uh, and you're out there. Dope. All right. Uh, I'm going to as my bonus action uh I'm going to shout out to Zax keep it up Zax we got this <laughs> you can do it <laughs> I, be I believe in you spring break <laughs> I um, believe in you spring break <laughs> beautiful uh, uh, and uh, give Zax bardic inspiration all right, dope. Super. Zax, you have Bardic's Inspiration. And that's my turn. And that's your turn. All right. 
Uh, the difficult terrain that was in here, does that fade now? Yes. It faded on Floop's yes. next turn. That, that faded on uh, Floop's last turn, okay. Yeah, I was just like, thinking, I was like, wait, why is that still there? That should that should be gone by now. Yeah, it should um, be gone. All right, and so we go five. Has anybody actually taken any damage? I have. I have. Yeah. Uh, I, Not a lot. Uh, I'm still on my, uh, uh, on, on my extras. Extra XP, but so far, no. Does the unicorn like have HP? Is it targetable no. by no. anything? No, nope. <laughs> nope. it's not. It's a uh, so yeah, it just like ran forward and did that like usual like it kind of gets down on its two front arms, like pulling itself uh, along, and uh, like it just like through. rushes. Yeah, like rushes through the vo the the unicorn, moving away. You have an oh. attack of opportunity if you want to take it. Oh, <laughs> sure do. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Ah. Uh, you do miss. Uh, it moves through here. And that does seven damage to Floop. Lights you on fire again. Uh, and it goes the last of its movement to here. Doing six damage uh, to you. Lighting you on fire. Fun. Nope, that's it. That's <laughs> light <laughs> itself on fire. Whoops. Um, letting on fire and then going again at uh, making its swings with a miss and then a miss and then a hit. Ah, uh, not necessarily. Twenty-one. There is something I can do here. Oh. Push it back. <laughs> yeah. Sh Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 I can take <laughs> suggestions here. Yeah. It was a joke. Push it back. Like... Push it back. No, don't. don't Shield that's five to your AC for uh, for the triggering attack. Yeah, and you take no damage from magic yeah. missile. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could so, do that. Uh, it's 18 plus five. So, so it puts, be 20 20 plus plus five, puts your yeah puts that to yeah 23, which would then get you get you out of this. All right, that would shield you from the attack. All right, yes, okay, good job. Yeah, so it immediately runs over, re-engulfs you, and then, like, starts, like, making fists, like, pounding down at you, and you, like, erect this magic shield, and it's just, like, banging against the outside of it, trying to get at you. Uh, Zax, it is your turn. Uh, Floop, you're on deck. Uh, damage for fire. It is damage for fire. Da -da 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 -da. Nine damage. All right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to cast another spell. Okay. Cast that. Uh, let me just double check this. Just in case I want to cast it at like a higher level. Call it me names. No, I don't. Here. <laughs> okay. I could. I could Run call away. it names and do damage to it. Yeah, for some reason that's oh yeah, you can click show spell description now, I guess. I don't know if that's working or not working for other people. Uh but yeah. Fifteen foot cube, wave of thunderous force sweeps in the fifteen foot cube originating from you. Constitution saving throw and a failed save, the creature takes two D eight. Uh successful save, the creature takes half as much damage. Unsecured objects that are in that area. And yeah, it's pushed ten feet away from you by the spell's effect, and the spell emits a thunderous boom. Uh so yeah, you let off this like crack of a hit. Um, that's not, whatever. Uh, and it goes five to ten feet away, uh, and uh, it's got to make that constitution saving throw, and the DC on that looks to be 15. Yep. Yes. It does not make it, so it takes that damage, and it gets pushed away. Hooray. Nice. Uh, yeah. I'm going okay. to use my bonus action. Well, actually, uh... First, I'm going to move. Move while still trailing this fire. Okay, which spaces do you move through specifically? Uh, Cause these spaces. Because I'm assuming that like right here is the overhang where we came out. Yeah. So there's a door that's just underneath where those two uh, icons are. Um, so but yeah, if here, you move up to there, to there, and then over. And then here, um, and then... Over here. Yeah, 
Here, let me let me do that for you. If you go to here and then you want to move this way. Yes. Okay. Dope. So, so, so I end up here, here and here, here I'm, I'm going to use my bonus action to do another burst of temporary HP. Okay. Uh, and I just rolled this my last turn. Was it? it was 1d8 plus 4. <laughs> Did dwarves make asbestos armor? No. They just make armor that they as presume is thick enough to withstand fire. So both Sices and I gain 11 temporary hit points. What's the ability that gives this to you? This, this is my arcane my, uh, Eldritch Cannon. Yeah, the that shielding I'm carrying one? around with me. Oh, Remember? the yeah, you put it in the shielding mode. Yes. yes. <clears throat> uh, it there still fires like... when it's in shielding mode? No. No, 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 yeah. Okay. But it, it's much more subdued than the actual cannon when it's in that mode. But yeah, me and Sices get 11 temporary HP. All right. Thank you. And that's my turn. All right. Okay. All right. So, Floop, you are up. Keeper, you are on deck. I am putting myself out, grumbling angrily. Which is an action. That's Grumb an action. Grumb that yeah, that's still action. take the, the <laughs> D10. That's still two damage. And then you put yourself out. Yep. And then okay. after, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. With the, where is it? I had it right in front of me. Misty step? Yep. Misty step. Misty. All right. Misty you teleport step. to a uh, spot 30 feet away that's unoccupied. Up to 30 feet. You don't have to be the full distance, but why not? <clears throat> yeah. There you go. So you can go to there. Yeah. All right. I do that. I will, I will move you there. There you go. All right. And you still have your movement. Yep. Uh, you can move further if you want. I'm gonna move there with a standing leap. So I just boink. Yeah. Uh. Try to drag your token on over. Click on I'm the, trying. Uh, click on the cursor I'm... icon. On the top. Oh. Uh, <laughs> there. Your... there you go. I boing. There you go. All right. So I you can't go to there. See her. Yeah. I can't see her either. <laughs> I yeah. boing. She is. She is in the dark over there. Cool. I boing in the darkness. Can you see? Your I token? am darkness. Casey, can you see? Yes. Token? Okay. Good. <clears throat> okay. All right, um, and that's your turn. Keeper, you are up. Vrail, you are on deck. Okay, I'm going to take the dash action to double my movement speed. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40, 60. There you go. I'm going to use my bonus action to take a swing at him with my astral arms. Okay. Fourteen does not hit. Okay. All right. Well, and then I am going to move. <laughs> just like, runs in. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, hit and yeah, run. Yeah, hit and run. And that's my turn. Man, I am not doing well with these rolls today. 
Yeah. Uh, Vrail, it is your go. Sices, you are on deck. What, Keeper's not doing well with rolls? <laughs> Big surprise, <laughs> I know. What? <laughs> All right. Um... Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Sorry. That's okay. I, I had I had a turn and I was then like, oh it's your turn. I have no idea what D D is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> looks at piece of paper, paper says breeds. <laughs> <laughs> um I believe... Just, like, head emptied for ah, a second. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> no thought. So, head empty. Right here. Move on up. Cast, Get it. Cast spiritual weapon right here. Oh, damn. <clears throat> yeah, we do have that. Did I ever make an icon for that? No, yep. I didn't. Yes. I should do that. You did. I've, I've just been, like, dragging and you putting did, a though. picture in there to act um, as an icon. Okay, well, the picture um, was like, of, like, that, that, like... The lightning chain. That lightning Jogio. whip. Yeah. Yeah, I have that in here. Or I did. Good lord, where'd that go? Anyways, okay, so you, you put the, the thing over there. Right, yeah. I will... There it is. There? Yes, please. And then All right, it, there it does... Is. Uh, it does an attack immediately. Okay. Which doesn't hit. That's it my... It's not. That's actually my luck forever with Spiritual Weapon. Is my spiritual weapons never fucking hit? Um, Chain whip. And then I do uh, an attack. I do a attack. Yeah, I d you do a attack. attack. Get. Sixteen Get him. hit. <laughs> Sixteen does not hit. And I do a attack. Do no. a attack. Ten does not hit. <laughs> so then I move back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does he attack? All right. <laughs> yeah, he is smarter than the swingy you. Um, Stices, it is your turn. Uh, and then the elemental, and then Zax. All right. Stices, uh looks up into the sky, raises her hands into the air, and casts at... Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Wham. Ugh. Moonbeam! Yes! Wait. DC 15 Constitution. I, I have a thing for this. Yeah, anyway, I've got a sound for that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you do? <laughs> of course it's I do. It's the same sound. It's the same sound. Is it the same Looks sound? Up. Moonbeam! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Blah! Blah! The fucking power of the moon! Um, now, is this the moonbeam that we know? Yes, it is. Yeah, five yes, foot is. radius, ten foot high cylinder of fucking moonbeam lands on him. That uh, I can just move around at my leisure. That you can just move yeah, around at your leisure. I'm trying yeah. to fucking. I don't have an just icon. Make a for circle. That. Just make a circle. Just make a circle. Yeah. Just make it blue. It, just stick <sighs> it right on him, basically. <laughs> that, wherever he is, that's where it is. Put it right that's in where there. it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just do the yeah, five yeah. foot radius, so ten, like, so ten it's, foot. It's a it's a large size circle. Pretty much. Okay, so, so yeah, literally we'll it's size. size circle. No, it's huge size. No. I'm I'm large size. Oh, yeah. yeah like about yeah. yay. Yep. Yeah. All right, so moonbeam hits what? it. It's got to do a save. Uh, Constitution save DC fifteen. Huzzah. Oh, uh, ding dang does it. make that save. Um, saves for half, though, doesn't it? Saves for half. Uh, Roll yeah. the damage. Cylinder spell ends, the dim light fills the cylinder. When a creature enters that area for the first time, thing. Or yeah, when it starts there. Save or when it uh, starts there. Yeah, it takes 2d10 oh. radiant damage on a failed save and half as much on a yep. successful one, and shape changers get automatically switched back if they fail. Does it say that? Um, yeah. Yeah, Shape Changer makes its saving throw. Ah. Oh, sorry, no, it just makes its saving throw with disadvantage. If it fails, it also instantly reverts to its original form and can't assume a different form until it leaves the light. Correct. Um, cool. Yeah. Each of your turns after the spell, you can use an action to move it up to 60 feet. Okay. Anything so else you want to do? Roll the 2d10 damage. Uh, oh, wait, I no. Already, it already it rolled. Okay. It got rolled. It's so it was 10, 9 it's 10 damage. Uh, at half. 
of that I rolled real low on this, basically. But you get to roll again, like, right after your turn. Yep. Yeah, because it'll be his, his uh, turn. Because it immediately starts its turn now if you don't want to do anything else with your turn. Are you doing anything else? Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna move. So I want to get a good distance away from this guy because I don't like getting burned. <laughs> do the, he do the big Bernie owls. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four. Yeah, it, so it needs to make <laughs> another constitution save. On the it start do. Of its turn. It oh. succeed. Oh, uh, roll me 2d10 either way, because that's... Is it 2d10 or 2d8? It's 2d10. 2d10? Uh, yeah. 2D Moonbeam's crazy. It at, I cast it at third level, so I get to... Do I get to add the extra Oh, yeah. Plus, oh, yeah. plus yeah. 1d10, so, so yeah. 3D10. Yeah, 3d10. 3d10. It didn't roll 3d10 yeah. oh. the original time. Oh. Yes, it, it did. did. It just yes, rolled it did. real low. If you, it, hover, it, uh, it, it says 2d10. Yeah. yeah. 2d10. Yeah, it says 2d10, and, and then, then above that, it rolled the it. additional d10 there. Gotcha. Uh, but it just rolled a 1. Ah, gotcha. um, so this one's so 8 radiant. Like that, and that is 8 radiant damage as the beam comes crashing down on it. All right. Um, it will then go 5, 10 into that space there. Uh, that lights you on fire, and you oh, no. take that. 1d10 damage, 6 damage. Oh no. Uh, it then makes some attempts to attack you. Go ahead. They 23 hit you. Just barely. Good lord. Jeez. That's what you Just that's what you get for stacking shields. So, roll the damage. Really well. Yeah, no, so that's uh 11 plus 11 fire damage. That is 22. And that's 15 ice damage to it. Yep, uh, which is bumped up to a higher amount because it takes extra damage from ice. Um, it, yeah, it rushes in and just immediately, like, just starts trying to engulf you. Your your armor just, like, uh, pressing back against it. Um, so that's 22 fire damage, and it makes another attack. Does 20 hits? No. 21? Yes. <laughs> 21 hit. Okay. Uh, and that is 15 damage, uh, as it lays into you for, uh, its last time. Okay. Oh, Sizes, you're gonna want to be here for this. Um, oh, oh. does the armor of Agathis right, uh, affect it a second time? Um, let me see. The, the 22 damage would have stripped off the armor, though, is that correct? Yeah, it would have. So, no, the okay, second so time it doesn't the, hit. The, the second time it doesn't take the damage back, because then, but never mind. That being said, uh, you can go to the bathroom. that first, okay. uh, that first, but that first one looked like it hit almost as hard as my swing, my my yeah, swing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it, it was it was brutal. Uh, Braille was already on fire, so why is she getting an additional two d six for that first attack? How do you mean? Well, the 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 first burning attack, burning touch that hit her, dealt her eleven plus eleven. What was that extra eleven for? Yeah, actually, what's the extra 11 that, for? That extra 11 for was if it was a crit, which it is not. Which it isn't. Oh. So it only dealt 11 damage that first time. Excellent. So, oh, so yes! Still be, uh, the, the armor of Agathis would still be up. Yes, it would! Dope. All right. <laughs> uh, fair. So it does take that damage. All right, we're going to need to wait for Cassie to get back. By, like, by like four points. <laughs> or no, by... Hold on. It would, have, it would have been 15 temporary HP. Just yeah, 15. Better. Okay, but 15 temporary HP. It moved through me for six damage. Right? That's true. Yeah. So it only popped once. Okay. Because I was dropped to. Yeah, I was dropped to nine uh, armor back. Yeah. So yeah, it only popped on the first one. It did not pop a second time. But you're not taking that extra But I'm not damage. taking the extra 11 damage. So... Yeah. That's still a, that's still a bonus. That's, that's important. Yep. Okay. So, is it still the uh, Elemental's turn? Since uh, it's not dead? We need to wait for Thyses to Why? get back. Because some stuff's happening. The second, the second armor of Agathis did not explode. 
Uh, if I only did 11 damage to you the first time, that's not enough to eat through your armor of Agathis, which means yes, the it second was. time it would no, no, have no. done. No, no, Listen, listen. Yeah? It passed through me for f six damage first. Which did not proc armor of Agathis, because it's not a melee attack. Then, no, the 11 the damage... Two melee attacks, though, that it dealt. Yes. Listen, okay. Oh, so but the six, six damage, damage passing into you, uh, six, and then the plus 11, 11 was okay, yeah. enough to take to hit it once, and then the second attack did like there was no armor of Agathis. Yeah, okay. So All it right. did not explode. Continue. Yeah, no, it turns over either way. Okay. Um, Zax, you are up. Floop is on deck. Like. All right. As much as it would have been beneficial for me to have won that. I, it would have been cheating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so do me that fire, fire damage. damage. That sweet, sweet fire, fire damage. damage. He's on fire. Let's see. Two damage. Two damage to my shield. Yeah, to your, again, temp HP. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy I've got that. Uh... And I'm going to cast. Shatter. Shatter! DC 15 constitution save throw, which it will make with disadvantage. It does not make. And that is 13 thunder damage? Yep. All right. Oh, plus an additional eight because of, and I'll copy and paste it. Actually, it's, it's a class feat. Okay. My arcane firearm. It doesn't so you're say... shooting a second time? No, no, no. Th this is the damage on top of that. Hmm. It doesn't say how often I can shed my skin. Just that as a bonus action, I can do it. <laughs> I would say that's once like a long rest kind of thing. I would say so too. <laughs> yeah, cause I'm that's, just going to add once per long rest because that yeah, just seems more that's, balanced. That's a, little, that's a little silly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. That's an additional eight damage. Just a yeah. reminder to people who have uh, Bardic Inspiration that you have Bardic Inspiration. Yep, I've, I've got, got it marked. marked. All right. Uh, Anything else yeah. you want to do on your turn? Um, for my, how close is this thing? Uh, for my, uh, other one, I'm going to have my homunculus shoot at it again. Do it. Okay. And that's a bonus action you activate the homunculus to shoot at it, yeah? Yes. Oh, and uh, plus, then, wait, no, it's it's my bardic inspiration, not the homunculus's, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's so I wouldn't be able to add eight. Scenario. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's it for me. Well, wait, I get to move. Just before it, before it, it, it has a chance to do anything else again, I'm moving away from it more. You know how when you light a zombie on fire, you just get a flaming zombie? <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel about you, uh, Vrail right now. <laughs> yeah. And that's my turn. All right. Uh, Floop, you are up and Keeper's on deck. All right. So... How often <laughs> does this, um, this unicorn pop its thing? It's every time I do a, uh, a I cast a spell that heals a someone. Gotcha. And on this, <coughs> mm -hmm. Mr. Carrots! <laughs> Healing spirit! Uh, Mr. Tickles. I summon Mr. Tickles. No. Oh. no. <laughs> right here, Rob. Which isn't a healing spell, I think. Oh, yes, it is a nope. healing spell. Yep. Yes, it is. It's Ding. Yeah, so everyone gets 7 HP back. Yay. Well, everyone within the circle, so not nope. mere Zex. Nope. In and out. Oh yeah, it's oh, it's yeah. everybody. Oh. It's everybody? literally everybody, everybody that you want. It's um, everybody. It's uh, anyone inside no or outside range. the circle gets oh, healed. Okay. Fair enough. Awesome. 
Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, Miss M Mr. Tickles, who is also intangible, will gently rest on top of uh, Vrail's head. Of course it does. Yay, friend. It there, so it's not in the way. <laughs> yeah. uh... All right. So everybody gains a bunch of HP. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, uh, I'm going to move a bit further away because I can. Poof. Yes. Pump the tank. Pump the tank with healing so it can just stand here on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, all right. Keeper, you are up. Vrail, oh. you are on deck. And all when right. I say on top, it's literally on the icon. Yeah. I want... Uh, yeah, I'm just not putting it there, though, so that okay. she can still access oh, I, her character. <laughs> I know that my character is, is has a fucking butterfly on its face. You see, like, this, like, it. magic butterfly lands on your nose. There's, like, a couple of dwarves in the audience that are like, oh, that, like, nod and, like, give, like, a little golf claps. Like, and, oh, and very Vrail's nice. And like, Vrail's nice. like, uh, um, uh, Sideshow side Bob about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keeper quickly kicks off of his position. Is, can I hit it from there? Or do I need to be there? Uh, you gotta be there. be there. Okay. And I will take a swing. I will quickly zoom in. Get it. Get up nice and close. And take a swing at it. That hits. I will spend a key point to activate Stunning Strike. Hell yeah. That's... Nine plus five in force damage. The, 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 plus, five is... the, plus, the plus five is if I would have crit. Yeah, because okay. a crit so nine it's, force damage. It's just a nine for the same reason. Uh, yeah, of... it's, it's rolling with advantage, um, but then it's, yeah, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Is Sias, is, is Sias, he's back? Yeah, I've been back. Sias, indeed back. Uh, your fist, as you, like, charge up this power, makes contact uh, with the, not just the, the chest of the fire elemental, but you manage to find purchase and strike the uh, gem that's inside you see suddenly its form destabilize. It buckles a little bit, and then it fucking explodes. Uh, <laughs> let me just see here. Uh, okay. Okay. How do you want to do this? <laughs> well, because... I mean, I would say how you want to do this, but here's how you want to do this. Uh, <laughs> everybody here's needs how to make, this happens. Everybody make a deck save. Is this a magical and effect? Yes. This it is. Oh is an explosion. <laughs> I they would not call this a spell. Um, it's not a sp that's not what I'm asking. It's, it's a magical effect because it's a magical creature exploding. Yeah, you know what? Magic thing. fire. Why not? Yeah. Sick. I get advantage. So you get advantage on that. Uh, for what dexterity save? It's a dexterity oh, no. save. That is correct. Um, can I use Bardic Inspiration on this dexterity save? I believe you can. Yes, you can. Yep. All right. You can so use it on anything, so. Plus 1d8, is that, is that it? Yep. Do you eight, you yeah. do your dex save, and then you can add a d8 to it. Good. Oh, oh Zach. you're going to need that d8. This is why I saved it. <laughs> that, that d8 won't help me. I rolled a nat 1. No. no. Ah. Roll that. Do it anyway. <clears throat> one D eight. But Come on. If it's oh, oh no. what I think it is, I don't know. Okay. Doobity doop 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 do. Energy, oh, let things affect yeah. you, storing it for your next melee attack. You have resistance to the triggering damage type until the start of your next turn. Also, the first time you hit with the melee attack on your next so you just you just negate the attack entirely. No, I think no, it's no, half. This is, no. I'm, I've got uh, have, resistance to it. Yeah, so, so, it half half so you have resistance to the damage type until the start of your next turn, but it captures the damage coming in. It, it yeah, doesn't say, it like, I, it doesn't nullify it. Yeah, it doesn't nullify it. 
it captures, yeah, it's, it's, it captures the damage that I absorb from it for my next melee attack, but I still take okay. half of that damage. Yeah. Jesus Christ, artificer. Yeah, yeah, absorb yeah. Absorb yeah. Like, rangers get that ability, uh, that spell too. Like, oh, it's so wild. Yeah. Ugh. Bards can have it too, I think. So, Man alive. Um, All right. Either way, I, I, I rolled the I rolled a critical twenty-seven, and I have evasion, so I take no damage. You take nothing. Yeah, of course you don't. You super um, take nothing. Because of, of course not. You leap straight up into the air as a blast wave kind of emits out from it um, on all sides. Everybody that was inside the blast range of forty feet, which is unfortunately everyone, um, it takes forty damage. Which is halved if you succeeded on your th on your saving throw. Did I succeed? Or you got resistance. What was, or you the, have what was the DC for it? Bullshit artificer crap <laughs> that lets you <laughs> just oh. attack a hundred times a turn and what just not DC? get hit by stuff. What's the DC? Uh, the DC was fifteen. Okay, so I, I saved. Oh, half. so so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. oh. Thank goodness. Floop is at zero. Oh. I, I, I Floop just quit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Floop is out and is no, making Floop, death Floop saves. Oh, she rolled. No, never mind. She only rolled a two. Yeah, roll a okay. seven and then a two. Um, so yeah, this thing, uh, as you do that last bit of damage to it, grows unstable and then explodes uh, in the middle of the arena, granting you guys victory. I rush I over cool to as I land. <laughs> can I use it? To... <laughs> can I do a cool pose as I land? You indeed do the superhero landing, if you would the like. Point, the yeah, superhero landing. landing. I also have the slow fall, point so. Landing. I, I rush over to Floop and throw uh, five points of layout hands onto her. While uh, uh, Rail is still on fire. Yep. yep. <laughs> How much damage do I take for the fire? Uh, go, yeah, the fire. Both of us. There you go. Six damage for you, you. And five damage for you. Uh, you guys can put yourselves out at your leisure. Uh, we'll just say that you are out. I will do it after I lay on hands. Floop for five healing. Ba -da -da -da. Everyone is different. Those two people are not on fire. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> I'm going to... I've put out the fire, like, all the fucking time, and in the end, I'm the one who fucking eats, eats the dust. I still have all my temporary hit points from the beginning of the fight. Yep. I, yes, yeah. I'm going... Mr. Show Off, I never get hit. Yeah, you what? never took damage, <laughs> and I am scratching my head at how I'm going to challenge you effectively going forward. <laughs> Zax is going to put himself out and then have his, uh... His Eldritch Cannon give him another burst of temporary HP. <clears throat> and I can just give right. him, I can also just give oh. th uh, Caper even more armor. <laughs> here's, here's, here's how you nullify that. Have more than one target. Yeah. Like, I, I was just moving around a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so that'll never happen. I, <laughs> Vrail, <laughs> Vrail lay on hands as Floop, pats herself off, and goes back over into the middle of the field and picks up her skin, throws it up <laughs> over one shoulder. Your skin that you shed it was incinerated, so what you do find is like one or two charred pieces. Okay, well, there's. It's part of the skill. It is part of the skill? You retrieve and what? Eat your skin? Yep. Spends one minute at eating its shed skin, it regains eight points equal to half that point maximum. I'm going to say that because it was burning and you shed it during that regard, I'm going to say that there is no skin for you to eat. Okay. Well, I make sure that there's no skin. Right. <laughs> Zach's just well, gonna run over and see if there's any core that's remaining. Yeah, I col you know uh, what? I collect the fucking ashes of my skin. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, oh, I'm not eating it. Well, <laughs> I'm making sure there's no fucking spell components for blood magic. Yeah. <laughs> you you <laughs> in the center of the field and sitting there uh, is a medicine ball-sized uh, red gem. Uh, glowing in the middle of the field. Flo basically hot. just woke up, Stand. wakes up, and and is like, "Who's cooking bacon?" <laughs> Deeper just continues to stand there and look like a total fucking badass. Lizard bacon. Hell yeah. Can I can I not be on fire now? Thank you. Uh yeah. yeah. Sorry, I thought I took that off. Yeah, you're not on fire. Thank you. Uh, Dax will yes. will check, check to see if the the gem is hot first. It's very hot. Uh, okay, if you touch it, it will burn you. Okay. 
Can I grab it with my astral arm? Uh... Will, will, will it burn giant astral spectral arms no. that aren't attached to you? I mean, yeah, but Does they're not attached hand? to you and they're not a thing, so... Or, or uh, a homunculus arm? Uh, sure well, the homunculus, homunculus is, not a is made of stuff, so yeah, it will be Oh, I didn't know it had hit points. Yeah, yeah it has hit points. Hand. It does not, um, from last I checked. Um, a mage hand would not be able to lift it. It is too large. Oh, okay. Can I pick Fair. it up? Oh, medicine ball. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. um, he picks it up. Yeah, you know what? Go for it. Uh, strength check. Strength check? You mean wisdom check? Oh, yeah, because your your arms. Go for it. Arms. Just, uh, you yeah, go. you lift it up. All right. Now what? Well, you're holding we, we, a huge red gem now. I, uh... All right, Keeper has stance and holds it up in the air triumphantly. Zach makes a uh, yeah. vegetation, little little sparks and stuff fly out. All right. This was not my kind of fight. <laughs> I have zero okay. death, so I'm like that. Also, I have dark vision, so like, why is it, why can't I see? <laughs> I do not know. Uh, we will have to uh, fix that. Oh, it's, it's just something that has to be put into your icon, and oh, then yeah, okay. the icon your character sheet uses needs to be deleted and then reset uh, yeah. on the new oh, one. Geez. It's like some yeah, stupid gotcha. bullshit. That All right. Mr. I only play well. humans, so, that uh, I'm, so I don't think of this for my tokens. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to do any of it. <laughs> well, the thing is, if I add it onto the token and then hit save, and yeah. then it's also on your character it's sheet, it still won't sheet. work if you drag it in, because yeah. it needs to be like... It's like this weird double secure thing that you have to do in order to yeah, give tokens weird. like weird shit. It's dumb. Um, but yeah, so with oh. that, you guys now stand victorious. Oh. The core That's of nice. the elemental now in your inventory. And your possession. Uh, I'm just going to not put it in my inventory and just hold on to it with my astral arms. Yeah, go for it. Um, Car Cara the Volcano Shark just reminded me that, yes, I have very special oven mitts that I can put oven on. Oven mitts! You do oven indeed mitts. have completely flame retardant oven mitts <laughs> that you can put on uh, to mitts. touch the gem if you want to. Sure. But is she strong? How heavy is How heavy yeah. is this thing? Oh, this thing's insanely heavy. Um, okay, maybe not. <laughs> so maybe yeah. give me the oven mitts. I'll carry it. Okay, them. yes. Uh, Regardless of whatever happens, Flu like, opens her bucket, puts water into it, plops into it, and deflates. You right, can't so, yeah. I, can, so I can continue to hold this for about 47, 45 more minutes or so. I can hold yeah. it forever. Yeah, I... I yeah. Siasis uh, hands the oven mitts to Rail. I put the oven mitts on. I'm yeah, sure they're, um, I'm sure they're very like old lady looking ass oven mitts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. your hands might definitely be too big for that. But um, as you guys are deciding who to give the mitts to, um, a number of dwarves come out with sort of a, a palanquin made of uh, specific materials like uh, different stones and metals, uh, okay, and they come out it. with like a large set of, uh, you know, so, sort of like tongs that need to be manned by multiple dwarves to like pick the gem up, put it in the carrier, and then pick it up and carry it away. So Vrail's there with like three fingers on each hand in these fucking mitts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It shrugs and then hands the glove mitts back to Science. As the dwarves are- kind of laps and takes them back. As the dwarves are coming by, Zax is continually pumping out like temporary hit points to everybody just to make sure everybody has like the maximum that he can give them. Which is just how because, much? Which is uh, twelve. Gotcha. Uh, and the the dwarves will probably notice that when they get close enough to him that, that they, they get hit with it too. Sick. All right, as Luke they arrive. Luke already sleeping in our bucket. Yeah. As the dwarves with the palanquin arrive, Keeper will turn to them and say, You are here for the ship construction? Yeah, they, they like, give you silent nods as they uh, continue about their work. Do uh, I recognize them Keeper as will, people Keeper... who work on the ship? Yeah, Keeper will, yeah. You, would, <laughs> you would recognize these as, like, city officials and whatnot, and Garrick actually is with them, we'll say, uh, as they come in to retrieve the gem. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he's giving them directions as they move it and pick it up to be careful with it and everything. To, well, to why would they, why wouldn't Keeper just put it on the palanquin himself? 
Yeah, if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, like, well, just why waste the effort with doing it? If it takes multiple of them to do it, and I can just put it there. <laughs> yeah, sure. It just puts it Here there. you go. Yeah, then they, they pick it up, it and then off they go. With his giant astral arms. And, uh, I with that... Flips bucket. Uh, Thorgrim shouts out, It is done! The gem is theirs, and so we see how this unfolds. Vex will take a bow. April will and do a, that... another badass kung fu pose. <laughs> yeah, Floop is already sleeping in her bucket. Yeah, yes, ISC's picked up Floop's bucket, so she can just kind of sleep and we can take her where we need to take her. And I hold it like it gives the nod. To the audience, kind of thing. I put the rest of my lay on hands. I, I almost beca so. it became like a uh, frog leg roast instantly. Oh no. Let me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's our game for today. Yeah. Thank you all so much for coming out. Uh, yeah. To another adventure of our Thursdays, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. We've got the A team here. They alternate with the B team every other week. Uh, and we will see what's going on, because some members of the B team are going to be potentially out of town next week. So we'll see what's happening. We'll keep you guys posted. But until then, though, of course, I've been your hopefully kind of benevolent DM, Dr. Terawatt. We are joined by our intrepid adventurers going down the list here. We've got Cassie D20 Love Chew playing Siasis Blue Leaf, our Banshee Bard. Hey everybody, thanks for coming out, love you all, be good to each other, and be good to yourselves. Alright, and we've got uh, Anvrail Alo, our Yuan-T paladin being played by his Pooty Poots. Okay, love you, bye. Who's also <laughs> streaming over yes, on a, a Twitch channel's Pooty Poots. Yes, I am. Uh, and we've also got Floop, uh, our Grung Druid being played by KC, the Killing Chick. Hi, hi. I'm dead. <laughs> In both ways. <laughs> and we've got points. Keeper, our Thrykreen monk, being played by Warden. Remember, a martial artist is only as good as his most kick-ass pose. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, uh, we've got our goblin artificer, Zax, being played by Shaskar. All this fire and singed clothing makes me think of when I was first starting out as an artificer. Oh, those memories. <laughs> we'll see you all again next time on our next live stream. End of line. Bye. Bye. Bye.